Yeah, get it on. Got to get on a trip. We're going to make it. Get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you. Comedian. Controversial comedian. <laughs> Cave Hunt <laughs> is in studio. Uh, it's got shows coming up in Vancouver, House of Comedy. That'll be tonight as you hear this through Sunday, and then Raleigh, and then St. Louis. And you can go to k voncomedycom Good to see you, Kayvon. Yeah, what an honor to be here. I just want to start off by saying you have been an integral part of my comedy career before I started till today. So really? sitting across from you, big time. Yeah, started with Love Line, just laughing my uh, rear end off when I was supposed to be sleeping. And then uh, The Man Show, saw the first episode ever. And mm. then the Windy City Heat, an amazing Ooh, production. Yeah, Windy City Heat is, <laughs> you know, it's a sleeper, but uh, it's a, it's a, it's uh, it's a fan favorite with no fans. That's, That's right. Basically, the people what it who is. have seen it love it. All of us. Yeah, yeah, hard to explain to people, but you should experience it. I think it's free on YouTube, and we're worth every penny. With that show, Jury Duty, and how how big it got, and it's basically the same concept. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's that same. Same concept as yeah. jury duty. I mean, most of the stuff that I've talked about and tried to do has been the same concept as something that's come a decade or two decades <laughs> later. Yeah. Um, you think you get accolades and uh, financially rewarded for being early money on stuff. It's not that way with ideas. <laughs> it's that way with Apple stock. Right. And it's that way with like Uber stock. Yep. Yes, if if you'd gotten in on the ground floor of Uber or Apple, you'd be in great shape. But if you write a book 15 years ago called In 50 Years We'll All Be Chicks, everyone yep. just calls you names and tells you you're an asshole. Yeah. And then it all comes true. So it's like... It's and like, you're still an asshole. It's like getting <laughs> in on the it. ground floor of Uber and then being punished. Absolutely. For it. <laughs> and the only thing wrong with your book 50 years was you were like two decades yes. too late on that. Mm -hmm. Yes, so it, shot it. we we made it in yes we made it in about twelve years. Right, to, twelve years and so. things I could never even have imagined, and here here we are now. But you're one of the voices, and um, there are others that are being created. Who, when you try to corral people and herd them into some retarded corral. Most of the sheep are going to go, right? but some of the sheep are going over the fence and they're going to turn into wolves. That's exactly what's going on. So that's what I've been doing with my comedy is I was waiting for my favorite comedians to kind of speak up against some of this stuff. And you and a few other names did it. And I'm just looking around like, this is a wide open field. So I guess I went up over the fence and I've been just free game hunting this whole time, just picking off the easy targets. Feasting. Yeah. And the reality, well, f first things first, um, because I really do believe in this concept, but you, you have to tell me what you think of this concept. You know, um, whenever we talk about the people who went over the fence, um, we talk about people who believe in themselves and have talent and or ability, whatever, whatever that field is, right. you know, and it's like, I was just thinking about Sage Steele from ESPN, who's going to be on this show soon. Awesome. Um, Tucker Carlson, who's going to be on the show soon. Um, you have to be good. And the problem is, is only about 8% of people are good. And the other 92% of them are utterly replaceable. Yep. And so you're always going to be able to bully the utterly replaceable into conformity because they're utterly replaceable <laughs> and they will be shit canned if they do not conform. So we're always up against it from a percentage standpoint. Right. But the people that are actually good, like Jordan Peterson, is going to tell the Canadian College Board to suck his dick <laughs> because he's not going to go along with the, yeah. whatever the retard du jour is. He's not going along with it, but you have to be good. You have to be that good. You can't shove Ben Shapiro into a box and get him to conform. He'll, do, he'll say what he needs to say, and he's studied your argument better than you know it, and he'll just defeat you. So those are the guys yeah, that really and, look and up Yeah, and on to. the other side of that, Bill Maher's that way. He's yeah. like, I'm good, so I don't have to say things that are untrue that you're trying to force me to say. And so what it's going to do is it's going to create a lot of those yeah. people, but you have to be good because otherwise it's no different than – essentially having a good job in the 70s working for IBM and you going, I'm going to quit and start my own business. If you're not good, 
you just gave away your pension and retirement and vac- paid vacations. It's also who's going to jump over the fence because most people don't want to do that. And you have to be willing to take a lot of slings and arrows the whole time that that's happening. So um, I try to think, like, how did I get, like, a counterculture? But by the way, I don't look counterculture. I'm, you know, just clean-cut looking guy, and they call me a radical extremist sometimes. But the main thing is I think as I was in swimming, I was a swimmer in high school, and I had to wear a Speedo. Mm-hmm. And I think when people are looking at your junk, making fun of you, but you still have to be good, mm. then, then you really can uh, emerge from that uh, a stronger man. A speedo theorem. I, I like it. <laughs> yeah, we got to tie that in somehow. Yeah. So now what we're kind of talking about, and also what's happened is these people have overplayed their hand. So when when everyone is a racist, then no one is a racist. And that's what they don't really understand. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if you take a case study, uh, Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew, a few years ago, and just a few years ago, would be very upset about some online campaign that was trying to deplatform him or somebody on Twitter saying God knows what. Mm-hmm. He was very, he would internalize Everything, because that was, uh, well, he's an internist. <laughs> That's his chose, chose Literally on his business card. No, but he, he was wired that way. Like, he would, when we would go through the airports, you know, back in the 90s with Loveline playing colleges and whatnot, you know, at some point, some angry dyke would kind of come up to him at the Delta Terminal and go, what you're saying is dangerous. You're hurting children, and you need to be science or something. And she would walk away. And Drew would like follow her going, no, you misunderstand. You're misrepresenting what I'm saying. And I'd go, Lisa, let that bitch go. Who gives a fuck? Get out of here. And he'd go, no, no, I don't want her to understand. You know, so he's wired in a sensitive way. Mm-hmm. So when he starts getting destroyed by either the LA Times or Twitter or whomever, he's really internalizing all of it. And he's upset. That was like three, four, five years ago. He doesn't give two shits now <laughs> because that's all he sees. Yeah, and, and once you pile it on that thick, who gives a fuck? It's like, yeah. oh, if somebody said to me, the L.A. Times called you racist, I'd go, who the fuck cares? Did it help me sell tickets? That's what I right. want to know. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but no, that's exactly what's going on. A lot of uh, racist, rapist, child, whatever, they'll just throw these mudslinging things. And what I like is when the comments on YouTube are 98% favorable to a comedy clip, then the two percent, it's even more laughable because they're just really hating on you, and it's like the people have voted. It's right here. So, yeah. So the bad news, and in a, in a weird way, it's sort of, you know, the, the essentially, if you are going to try to put the leader um, of the opposition party, meaning if you're going to try to put Donald Trump in prison, right. you are then going to create a large group of people who rise up against that. So they're saying, well, what's with these people? And the answer is, is you've created them. If you're going to try to force people into announcing their pronouns and you're going to get a lot of people that tell you to fuck off. You've created this. If you're going to try to force people in the lockdowns or getting vaccinated, you, mm-hmm. what they don't understand is they create it. If it's sort of live and let live, any comedian can tell any joke and do anything and he's not going to be protested on a campus or shut down or something, then it'll be live and let live. It'll, it, it'll just go along. But if you're going to do this, then you're going to create this. And that's what they're doing is um, the more they try to cancel me. So here's what happened. They try to cancel me at a show in Plattsburgh, which is a ridiculous place up in New York, but it's the SUNY school system on their website. We support freedom of speech. We take government funding. So we have to let this happen. And so when they pro 10 students protested, 300 students lost a comedy show that night because of these 10. And so I paired up with Turning Point USA. I don't know if you know who they are with the yeah. Charlie Kirk and mm-hmm. those guys. I just said, hey, I'm a comedian. I have a good resume. Here's my clips. They said, we're going to take you back to every one of those schools that tried to protest. <laughs> so like you just said, they just create a bigger monster each time. Yeah. And I'm here for it. But whoever's doing it, you created it. Mm-hmm. This Nobody, meaning 
I didn't want to do battle with the L.A. Unified School District. I'm a product of the L.A. Unified School District. I have Vietnam-esque flashback nightmares about being in that pit right. called the L.A. Unified School District. Mm-hmm. But then they shut down all their schools, and my kids never attended the 10th grade session of their kids. And so I said something. But it's not my goal to do battle yeah. with a bunch of fucking pencil-pushing assholes. You shut the school, and I dared to say something. Right. That's all. And you're acting like I threw the first punch. There was no first punches. Comedians, whomever, they want to go to a campus, they want to talk, they want to perform. They're not interested in the battle. You created the battle. Then at some point, somebody punched back, and you accused them of punching them without any provocation. Yeah. And that's now that's where we're living. That's where we're at right now. So, And it makes comedy more fun. I, we're selling merch after the show. You do, do you do the meet and greet still? Are you Hell shaking yeah. hands? Okay, because I'm my only uh, security is that table between me and whatever fans. And 98 percent of the time, it's great. But there's always that the last person in line is the one who wants to complain to you and tell you what was wrong with your set from minute one till whenever they were offended. So that's what I'm dealing with now. So I've had the best time with fans and people and whomever i've never in my entire life had an issue oh, with really? anybody physically Man. ever oh no not physically no or even at the shows or they don't confront you no i i don't know they don't want to end up in your act yeah i don't well you know i grew up with some dude i just i spent half my childhood in a headlock <laughs> okay, i've spent about 36 percent of my childhood, like being wrestled to the ground by somebody yeah. and then jumped on and kicked. And, and I don't experience that. It doesn't, you know, then, you know, between football and like boxing and construction and stuff, it's, I'm, it, there's nothing you could do to me. Yeah. So you'd be a tough guy to tangle with after a show. Got those carpenter I, hands. I, well, uh, but I just don't experience bullying or mm-hmm. whatever. You could mm-hmm. say whatever you wanted from the audience. And then the, the heckler side of it is like, Okay, you know, good. I'll save a few jokes and we'll have a laugh at your expense for yeah. eight minutes, and then I'll go back to whatever. Doesn't oh, and those videos go the most viral if you ever get a get yeah a hang of those too. So but I think d- you have a higher threshold for like pain, and then so you don't even notice it's happening when it does happen. I don't notice that I'm being either disrespected or bullied or or anything. I, I, I it doesn't register. And then for the other parts of it, uh, heckling or whatever, I've always looked at it as like we're on the clock. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to be on this stage for an hour, maybe an hour and 10 minutes. Right. If we want to spend 13 of it with you, that's fine. I'm still getting paid the same, and I'm still leaving at this at the same time. So <laughs> one of my most viral videos was two uh, college age woke students came up to me after a show. I already sold my merchandise. They're the last in line, and I could just tell that just the way they're eyeing me up to talk to me. So I pulled out my phone, and they go, "Can we tell you something?" I go, "Yeah, I got to go live after every show. I go live, and then we can talk." And then I just kept them in a holding pattern for a good ten minutes. Hey, these are my big fans. We're hanging out after the show, <laughs> and every time I said, "These are my biggest fans. Are my last customers here." Their eyes were rolling. They were just oh, yeah. getting so triggered that trolling they couldn't them. yell at I trolled my trolls. It was awesome. All right, we're going to talk a little uh, football and a little uh, wagering. Fantasy with, football. A little fantasy football and and football as well. Yeah. Let's not to be a full post. <laughs> Jeff Manns is joining us. He's the uh, owner and CCO of FantasyGuru.com. Hey, Jeff. Boom. Ace man, let's get it on. Yeah, let's get it on. <laughs> uh, fantasy football. You guys tell me what you think about this. Tell me if it's a big faux pas or not. Uh, I was inspired by the trophy that's behind you. And I don't know if that's from football or fantasy football. This one's fantasy. That, Most of my trophies are from fantasy. I, I, I sized you up. <laughs> Judging by, yeah. by the, by the uh, rim selection on your glasses, I assume <laughs> that it was more about fantasy than it was about gridiron greatness. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> it's a sad testimony, but I saw a big trophy True. behind, but I saw all the names on it. Yeah, yeah. All right. So I'm yeah. assuming that's one of those trophies that each year, like the Stanley Cup, some, yeah. the winner of the fantasy gets the name. And then you get to keep it for the year? 
Yeah, that that's one of those. Uh, yeah, that one we get an engraving every single year, and whoever wins, and you pass it around, they get to hold it for the the entirety of the year. Yeah. So you won last year. Well, I did win last year. This one, you know, there's a dark story behind this one. Good, because I got a dark story. <laughs> this is fantastic. This is actually, the, the last year was 2011. This one is actually in honor of a friend of mine, and that was a league mate who was actually murdered oh, in Chicago. Wow. Um, this, like, it's still unsolved. He was murdered in his garage going to work. And the last message he ever wrote is Pedro Garola, rest in peace, Pedro. Um, but the last message at like three in the morning, he posted on our league website. It was like, we drafted the night before everything was good and he was murdered the next day. So this was like, we stopped this trophy in that, but we do have another trophy that we do hand out in that same league every year, but yeah, pretty a dark, dark tale on that one. That's crazy. Like murder during the daylight hours, like business hours. 6 a.m. Uh, Oak Park, Illinois, just outside of the city of Chicago, uh, where we are all from. Hmm. And, yeah, he just murdered his garage, got beaten. They think it was an attempted car. They stole his car and uh, just beat him. And his wife found him, like, three hours later at work. I had worked with him at the time and, like, never showed up. And everyone's like, oh, he's got to know where he's at. You know, he's been late a few times before. But it uh, turned out, yeah, he was he was killed in his garage. It was just a, the last last contact he ever had was posting on our league message board and that it's day. unsolved unsolved to this day uh, september 9th 2010 when it happened in oak park jesus christ just walking to someone's garage during the day now it would be solved today because everyone's got a ring doorbell right exactly mm -hmm. yeah exactly or like true crime everything else i need to get this story out there probably because uh you know they update me every year they call me and what's going on but you know just City of Chicago, uh, there's a lot of unsolved crimes, unfortunately. What a shocker. Let's defund yeah. the police, everybody. Yeah, well, what we didn't know, like, we didn't, I'll tell you one thing we didn't count on. We thought once there's video cameras everywhere and there's ring doorbells everywhere, like, literally, there's nothing you can do. You can't walk onto someone's property anymore and steal the UPS offering on the porch and walk out without being filmed. So we thought... Well, this will be the end of crime. But what we didn't count on is that cops didn't care. <laughs> so we're like, good, we'll film everything, yeah. and then we'll just give the cops the film. But we didn't count on the part where the cops <laughs> didn't want the film and weren't going to do anything. So we're right back to, like, 2011 in terms of solving crime. It's just a viral right video. Right back at it. Yeah, and everybody walks into a CBS, takes whatever they want, walk out. There's Every day there's a new viral video of that, too. Yep. So, Well, the story... Um, and actually, Mike August happens to be on campus here today, so he could actually touch on this one. Ta-da! Uh, is that you, Mike? I can't see you, Mike. Chris, move your head. Okay. Yeah, so we had a situation in our fantasy football league, which I don't participate in, but um, Mike and Dave Damashek and... Uh, John Ham's in the John league. John Ham's in the league. Bill Welcome. Simmons. Cousin Bill Simmons. Sal, Kevin Hench. It's a story. laundry list of well, fantasy it, football gurus. You know, what's funny is these guys all got into the fantasy football league before they were kind of big names, you know? And now the Cousin Sal... I should have gotten that goddamn league, man. <laughs> Because, you know, John Hamm was, was John Hamm light back then, but he wasn't Top Gun John Hamm. And, you know, Cousin Sal was a, was a deep cut. Bill Simmons, uh, not a household You the guy man. who called it fairy tale football from the inception. So you immediately became persona non no way. I, I attempt to make everything as in, personally insulting as humanly possible. Um, they took it personally. So all these guys get in. Kevin Hanch, who's doing a lot of great work now with Tim Allen and stuff. And then everyone kind of got famous, but that was eight or 10 years ago. Oh, this is 15 years. Yeah, this has been going on since the Jimmy Kimmel inception of the, his show, even. Yeah, they now, even now, predate that. Jeff, I don't want to tell you how to run your league, but okay. according to their, uh, their rules, their bylaws is they vote somebody <laughs> out. Whoever oh. wins gets to dump a guy. <laughs> and it makes it a lot more interesting. Higher stakes. People work really hard, and they do a lot of lobbying, and they do a lot of, uh, uh, it turns very political because they don't want to be dumped by the guy who wins. 
Dude, Ace Man, you cur- I, I've listened to you for years and years, down the original member of the podcast and everything. So I know that John Hamm story by heart. When you told that story, 13 people, John Hamm was on the set all day of Mad Men, <laughs> grinding everything else. And then you tell them, like, that he shows up, you're like, yeah, you're out. And he just gets pissed and leaves. That rolled me, man. I, that is inspired. I've actually t- retold that story and given you proper credit, of course, but. Uh, over and over, and it's inspired a lot of leagues out there that are starting to do this now, and it's created plenty of uh, viral videos with. Oh my God, John Hamm is screwed. Yeah. Oh, you're saying that deal with other people? Okay, yeah, I got other it. Other people are yeah, doing I got it. Not John. Now I yeah. follow you. And but, once one is yeah. kicked out, then another one's welcomed back in. How do you pick who can join the league after that? That's a good question. It's the same crew. It's the same crew every year. Just whoever wins gets to kick somebody out for that year. For one season. Yeah. yeah. One season. There's like 13 season. people in a 12-team league. Yeah. So every year somebody's getting bombed. Perfect. Yeah. Right? And I love throwing out an A-lister. Like the so only <laughs> A-lister in that group <laughs> booted out. But the trophy controversy was uh, they had the trophy, the same trophy, you know, theory that you have circulates, puts the name on whoever wins, gets gets to hold it for the year. And our own Dave Damashek oh, no. got the trophy, uh, but he didn't display it. He left it in the trunk of his car, and then the car got rear-ended. <laughs> totaled. It got totaled, and then they towed the car, and they crushed the car with the trophy in it. Wow. <laughs> A proper burial. Wow. This and trophy's he, been held by everybody from Simmons to Sal to you know every member of the league has God. got some you know type of investment mm. in it, and Dave just callously lets it go <laughs> to the dump and then refuses to replace it. That was the real kicker. That's oh, why John Hans so kicked – Damashek out last year. Is oh, Ham kicked you. Damashek out. Yeah. Ham yeah, won, and it was his choice. And when he heard that Damashek literally let the trophy go and would not replace it, so John Ham doesn't get a trophy. That sounds like a cooked up story. Did we do an investigation to see if he was actually just smuggling the trophy to his underground case and still That'd be exists too many somewhere? For Damashek, it's totally believable that <laughs> believable. once the car goes away, he does nothing to get the trophy. All right, that's quintessential. <laughs> just check it. Just leaving it in the trunk of your car. Like, yeah. you know, someone who gives you a book that you don't want to read and you just you don't want to bring it in the house, but you don't want to throw it away. So it's you just so kind of first toss edition. it in the trunk. Yeah. Wow. So then Ham kicks out Sheck yes. for, for that faux pas. Uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And Sheck, he had everybody sign contracts written up by Mark Garrigus. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> to not kick him out. Yeah. He got Mark Garrett yeah. to draft him yeah. a legal letter saying oh that he God. couldn't be expelled from the league. Tam wiped action. his ass with that legal letter. <laughs> <laughs> and this is why the terrorists hate us, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, because this, is what, our problem, this is what we do all, all day. All day. All day. Ah, so what's uh, – I don't, I don't play fantasy football, but I, yeah. I love football and I never miss a – a football Sunday and there's something about football Sunday that transcends the actual games. It's more that this is our time to crack the beer and get together and eat a bunch of shit food (laughs) and hang out and bust, bust chops. And in Southern California, it usually means the beginning of instead of 102 degrees outside, it's going to start, start cooling off at night kind of thing. So it's like, I always have these fond memories of it. Outdoor weather. Yeah, it's the competition factor, too. Like, people, it doesn't matter necessarily what you win. You just want to win. It's like you're talking about all now A-list celebrities and stuff, and they don't give a shit. They just want to win, right? Like, it's just that feeling that I built something that's better <laughs> is really what the draw is of uh, fantasy football. Oh, Why, yeah. you know, we could watch our players that I draft. I told you. The I told you so factor is off the charts when it comes to fantasy football. Well, you know what it is, essentially? I've never thought about this, but the reason people are attracted, I believe, to the game of chess is chess isn't a board game. It's a I'm smarter than you game. Bingo. That's that's all it is. Other sports, you know, other games, games of chance, like sort of flipping cards and stuff like that. Nobody walks away going, that guy's smarter than that guy because he got lucky on a few few cards. Mm-hmm. But chess really just goes, I'm smarter than you, and that's why it exists, and that's what attracts 
people to the game. And it's not even I'm better at chess than you. It's I'm smarter <laughs> in life, the, in yeah. life, all, all encompassing <laughs> this. And mm-hmm. and fantasy football sort of has that same those yeah. same bragging rights because it's really it's a consumption of time where like somebody goes, you take professionals, you know, John Hamm does OK for himself. He's got some shekels. <laughs> Probably makes a few bucks. All the guys, Simmons, all the guys we're talking about, they make a lot of money. Mm-hmm. Uh, in some leagues, it's like you win, and you win $400. Well, if you, that means Bill Simmons gets $2 an hour if he wins <laughs> right. for all the time invested into this. Mm-hmm. So it has nothing to do with that. Plus, they're in multiple leagues. Sal's in two leagues. Simmons is in two leagues. I, every year, do the auction. I show up. And auction off the players for these guys as they as they put their teams together. You should see the fist fights that happen over the over the time. If I didn't give them enough time to bid, or I didn't oh, anticipate yeah. what they're going. I mean, it is the intensity is so off the charts versus what they get out of this. It's really <laughs> annoying. <laughs> it's all your fault. But it is. It's like poker. It is. It is a game where you're playing against people. Ace man, I tell this to my listeners all the time. That is exactly what this game is. We think of it in terms of this running back is fast or this quarterback is good, perceived good. It's not at all about that. It's just building a team, a collective, if you will, that's going to score more than the rest of the people. And you could prey on people's emotions. You prey on their habits. You prey on their fandom. All that stuff goes into being a high-level player. And it, to me, I, I played poker back in the day. I like the game of chess quite a bit. It's very similar to that, where you're playing against the these other folks in your league more than, and the players, they're just our pawns. They're our chess pieces to move around our board. The best also with their league is the reveal. I don't know if you guys have adopted the reveal, because it's not enough to toss somebody out. You have to do it with a lot of pomp and circumstance. And uh, also some deception. Do you have a favorite reveal? Unchanged. I, the favorite reveal was when they were having two guys solve a puzzle. Yeah. Right? It was like, well, it was like a almost like an obstacle course, and then at the end they had to put together a puzzle, and whoever finished uh, last w- was supposed to be kicked out. Okay. Well, it was implied the person, and, and Mike, you can uh, tell me if I move any of the official particulars here, but it was brilliant. They said <laughs> whoever was whoever won said it's it's between you two. Right. It was like Sal who won, I think. Sal, so I'd say it's between you and it's between Chris. And we're gonna see who can complete this kind of survivor like obstacle course first, <laughs> and uh, whoever comes in second is gonna get booted. So of course, the other nine guys in the room were cracking a beer and at ease watching these two monkeys run around to see which one of them was going to get booted out. But part of it was to put a puzzle together. And when the two were hustling to get the puzzle put together after the obstacle course, the puzzle read out who was getting booted. And it wasn't uh, one of those two those guys. <laughs> yeah. That was fucking genius. Yeah, it's like the Joker. Was that Sal? Yeah, and the best was Damashek was out. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh the complaining. And compl- that's why he probably pissed on the trophy. That's that's his revenge. And then I remember him taking his beer and leaving in August, going, "Leave the beer." <laughs> yeah, always leave the beer. You don't get to leave the beer. Leave yeah. The beer. Uh, so that must be implemented into your regimen when it comes to the fantasy football as well. That is going in the Rolodex, no question about. That is absolutely gold right there. What is, uh, who, what's the pecking order? Is it, you know, quarterback, running back, wide receiver, kicker? Or, or like, what is, what's the power rankings? Nowadays, we don't use kickers very much. Some leagues still do. It's, it's, it's now wide receiver. It, it's been running back since the dawn of time. I started playing this thing in like 1988. So like Walter Payton, Neil Anderson growing up in Chicago were the guys, Icky Woods doing the Icky Shuffle. Like that was my time frame. But and it was always running backs, early running backs. Now it's the opposite. It's much like the NFL. It mirrors the NFL where running backs aren't getting paid. They're trying to fight to get paid. They're not getting a contract extensions past the age. They're like a Hollywood actress, you know, 28 years old. They're just done. Uh, and the NFL is just done with running backs these days. Unfortunately, and it's wide receivers. So we're seeing guys like Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, Tyreek Hill. You know, they're just being drafted very, very early, and people are building around all these top end wide receivers. And does every league draft a defense as well? 
yeah, there's different leagues. You could do a defense, like a team defense. You could do an individual defensive player is what they call an IDP league, which is catching on a lot more now, where you actually draft the defensive side of the ball. That's the thing is like back in the fairy tale football days, right? They you were just there was just a bunch of nerds with glasses like mine that were just data people. But now we're seeing a nice influx of actual football people that know the game. Like for what I do over at fantasyguru.com, I'm always breaking down the system. Like how a quarterback performs against a 3 4 defense versus a 4 3 front, uh, how they run again in a zone blocking scheme versus a power gap scheme. Like now we're taking our knowledge of football and implementing it and say, oh, you know what? This system is going to be very good for this player. And we're, we're doing that. So we're, we're doing that in the defensive side of the football as well, where we know. Big guy, you know, tackle monsters like Roquan Smith now with the Baltimore Ravens are going to be very, very popular. Guy, secondary players, Jalen Ramsey before he got hurt in Miami was going to be a good standout because he kind of played safety and cornerback as well. So it's sort of, you know, we're moving on and getting more football knowledge into this hobby of ours. Did you guys, did uh, anyone here see the Johnny Manziel Netflix special? Oh, uh, yeah, I want to. Yeah, it's very interesting. Very sad, isn't it? Well, that's what, that's it is what sad. I thought coaching, right? It's insane that these coaches are like, yeah, go do whatever you want. I couldn't believe Cliff Kingsbury was on there sort of saying, oh, Johnny being Johnny is like, you're just letting this guy run ramshot all over the place. It was... Well, so, yeah. I mean, it, it, you know, it's interesting, which is they so Johnny Manziel first off people forget like what that guy was like in college you know you look at him as kind of weirdo junkie in a sad sad sack or something he dominated and yeah. it was incredible and they had this guy who was you know Michael Vick-esque you know kind of undersized but just could scoot and Kingsbury said in the first game, we tried to give him a game plan and kind of rein him in a little. In the second game, we went go improvise and he just improvised and they were dominant. But once you get to the NFL where everyone is fast, then you can't just improvise anymore. Mm hmm. Yeah, I will say Mike August was early money on Johnny Manziel. Like we would watch highlights from him, and he would he would be looking at, at right before he got drafted, and Mike would just go, "He'll never make it in the NFL," just by looking at him. I bet my career on it. I was on the Sirius XM show back in twenty whatever thirteen forty. I said, "If this guy is a makes an All Pro team, I'll retire. I'll find a new career. I'm out completely. There's no chance he's successful because he's not putting in the work. Not that he wasn't talented, just you can tell." Those players and being a professional athlete, it's more than being fast, strong, can throw any of that. You actually have to put in work. You have to put in book work. You have to know. And I love that moment of that doc when there's like his viewing time, his playbook time, 0. 0.0. Like not even a crap. Not even like he turned the power of the <laughs> tablet on. Like, yeah. Just, well, the <laughs> most amazing thing is because they talk about all the time and energy they put into researching these guys and meeting people yeah. in their lives and their coaches and their teammates, everybody. How do you miss the fact this guy's a full-on drunk mm -hmm. addict while he's playing college football? Mm -hmm. And none of that changes going to the pros, and nobody flags that? I mean, that's, yeah. that, that's, re that's never discussed, but that, they had to have known what they bought at the Browns. They thought, well, he'll clean up, and he well, never Well, the Browns were bad up. forever. He was partying nonstop. They just, you can't give an addict a $20 million signing bonus and go, oh, he'll turn around. Yeah, he's going to turn around <laughs> yeah. to the biggest addict on the planet is what happened. Right. Well, Hunter Biden turned it around. <laughs> he, got 20, <laughs> he got 20 million from Ukraine, and he's, he's sober now, Mike. He's so a great artist. I don't want to shit on your point, but uh, I think I just did. <laughs> Jeff Mann's FantasyGuru.com is where you go and uh, for all things fantasy. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Appreciate you joining us. Hey, thanks for having me on, guys. Appreciate it. All right. We'll take ourselves a uh, quick break. We'll come back and we'll do more talking with uh, Kayvon right after this. Well, let me tell you about Simply Safe. Squeezing in one last summer getaway. Before you take off, protect your home with the latest innovation from Simply Safe Home Security 24 7 Live Guard Protection. With fast protect monitoring, Simply Safe agents can deter intruders through your smart alarm wireless camera, warning them they're being recorded and that police are on the way. That will scare them away. 
Voted Best Home Security of 2023 by U.S. News and World Report. These guys are a great sponsor because they're a great company. They've been around for a long time now, and they do it right. Very ergonomic and no pulling wires. And right now, my listeners can get 20% off any Simply Safe system when you sign up for Fast Protect Monitoring. It's a huge offer, and there's a limited time. So Simply Safe, two eyes in there. Go online to simplysafe.com slash Adam. That is simplysafe.com slash Adam. There's no safe like Simply Safe. Let me tell you about Keon Aminos. Tired of gaining weight back after all the effort you put in to lose it? Yeah. Oh, I know that feeling. A couple of football Sundays can undo a lot of keto and a lot of the rowing machine. I take Keon Aminos every day. It's part of my routine. Not to lose the ground, I gain killing carbs and working out. Yeah, the stuff's great. I take it. I actually was drinking it about five minutes ago before I came in here. Uh, Backed by 20 years of clinical research, tastes amazing with all natural flavors, non-GMO and sugar-free as well. They're a great sponsor, and I'm a huge fan. So make all the workouts worth it. Do not slide back. Keon Aminos is the way you don't do that. Save 20% off on monthly deliveries and 10% off one-time purchases. Just go to get Keon. That's K-I-O-N dot com slash Adam. Get Keon dot com slash Adam for my fundamental supplement for fitness. Keon Aminos. I saw Megan Rapino, who's a soccer player for the United States soccer team, go to the White House and say this country isn't fair. I don't like seeing that. I love America. She's like, this country's not fair for me. I'm like, you're at the White House and you get paid to play soccer. That's a privilege. God bless America. All right? Yes. What a great country. I even did some research. She gets $3 million a year to play soccer, you guys. Not even real soccer, women's soccer. K-Bone is on the Adam Carolla Show. Ugh. No. I just... <laughs> I, but I, I, tell me what's wrong with me. Why do I hate people like Megan Rapino so much or any, like, race hustler or any sort of gender hustler? Like, everyone else sort of lives with them and just kind of goes, I don't know. She, and I, you know, Colin Kaepernick or, like, these right. people... Millionaire victims. They they affect me at some sort of cellular level, and everyone else just kind of goes, I don't know, Kaepernick's doing this, and that guy's doing that. Like, who who cares? Well, that's my number one uh, video right now is just kind of digging in on Megan Rapino. And it was mm-hmm. it's partly because they're spending millions of dollars marketing them on Facebook. So I'm coming in on their jet stream, so whatever they're advertising, and then I put my video. They don't know what it's saying about it, and it just goes the other way. You're not alone. It's like five million people have viewed my video in the last couple of weeks. And um, I figured it out. It's because Megan Rapino is uh, she's rich. She gets paid to play women's soccer, and she keeps bragging how many trophies she has and comparing herself to the men's team. Like, they don't even have a World Cup. I have three. But I'm always like, you can't compete in the men's World Cup. And then on her way out, she wants men to be able to play as women she's pulling up the ladder behind her saying yeah now that i'm retired i think men should play and if you don't agree you're a bigot well look there's evidence that men shouldn't be playing with women and i'll uh dawson can look this up first off the other thing to look up which i shouted out the other day which is going to make you laugh not only did they get beaten by sweden who never locked down Good poetic yes. justice for you assholes, because you know Megan Rapino was all about the lockdowns totally. and vax, and she had to be yep. number one. Uh, number <laughs> two, uh, Megan Rapino missed, and the Swedish chick who made it was the hot version yes. of Megan Rapino. Yeah. So it's a triple <laughs> fuck off. Regular hair color and just, just a hot version of her. Yeah. So if you can find those two, it'd be fine. And this other thing, and I, I may butcher this a little, but the. USA female soccer team was beaten by the 13 or 14 and under male soccer team mm. in just Texas. Just Dallas. Just, just Dal- Dallas. Not even, not even Texas. In one Dallas. city yeah. was be- built by guys who barely had pubes. <laughs> yeah. Beaten by guys with two pubes. Right. Beat your ass. So yep. if you, those guys, mm-hmm. mo- they're uh, 19 now. Would you like them to convert and compete 
against the women? And then which is it? Are you for women's rights and are you want to protect women? And what what is it? Or do you want them to be trounced by men who say they're women? I think the uh, the religion is being woke. So whatever the new thing of the day, they're all for that. And if you don't agree, then you know you need to be silenced. So my, my big thing is she went to the White House and said things weren't fair for her and people like her. And this is the oh. best country in the world to be a Megan Rapino. But if she wants to go to Pakistan and try it out. And then what's with the weird, bizarre sort of religious worship of these people? Like, first off, Megan Rapino, but, you know, Colin Kaepernick, some of these other, you know, AOC, mm-hmm. anyone in the squad, you know, um, Maxine Waters or whatever. They have, first things first, they have 10 cent heads. They're not smart. They're not interesting. They're not articulate. They're not funny. They're not, they're not, I mean, they, they're world-class complainers, Yeah. but they're not really even intellects. You know what I mean? Like, like whatever you think of AOC's policies are, you should go, that bitch is dumb. <laughs> like, why am I listening to a dumb person? Like, forget about all politics. Kaepernick seems like an idiot. Like, number one, so does Rapino. Like, why are you investing it, look, in the, I don't go like, yeah. I, listen, I want to hear what Johnny Manziel has to say. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck about Johnny Manziel because he seems like sort of a head case and he's got kind of a 10 cent head. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not list, I'm not taking marching orders from this guy. Well, but someone to go, but he's white and he's heterosexual and he, he believes in the First Amendment. I'd go, yeah, but he still sounds kind of dumb. Right. Well, I think hating on the USA is a big business, and there's um, big, it's just business. Big companies will sponsor it, and there's a f- big fan base. And every year, the colleges churn out another generation of people that have kind of succumbed to that kind of. Oh, you'd have. I mean, I've had a few uh, glasses of Don Julio on a private jet with Mark Garagos, and if he's told you what Kaepernick's net worth is, your fucking head would explode. <laughs> Now, I almost charged a cockpit and tried to force the plane down into a mountainside. (laughs) But it's the deals that guy's got cooking Mm -hmm. and what's coming in, fucking mind-blowing. And it's also like, uh, how down with the cause? Are you donating all the money to the Negro College Fund or like Black Lives Matter? Like, what what are you? Hey, Obamas, what are you guys doing with, with all the book royalties? Like, is that all just going back to the... Community, or you getting another estate in Martha's Vineyard? Exactly, like, and they'll pr- they'll pitch out like, yeah, Bernie Sanders, but they're not giving their money back. You have got to give the money back to the people. So like, it's not happening. So, oh god, I don't, yeah, I don't, that Nike spot that ran for Kaepernick was huge. Oh, well, his god. career was already on the downslope. So then you got to your eject button has become the biggest victim on the field. And that's All right. Do we have the Swedish, Swedish player side by side with uh, Rapino? Oh yeah! <laughs> yeah. I told it was a hot version <laughs> of her. That's why the Swedes picked her. Yeah, <laughs> they had a brown haired chick, hair down <laughs> past her shoulders, but they went. Yeah. You know what? We're gonna fuck the Americans up even more. <laughs> We're gonna take the hot version of Megan Rapino and it. have her beat with a penalty kick, that and that'll be the fun. icing on the cake. She missed the gap. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's oh god, these and it may you wonder. Now, here's a question. Are these big companies are they going are they going to keep going along with this because uh Bud Light just got destroyed. Um Target. Target just got destroyed. People are getting destroyed mm. for Target had their line of junk tucking Tuck the junk swimwear speedos. for yeah. kids or something. They're now getting destroyed. They're hurting. Like, are companies going to start figuring this out? And then here's another sidebar. I was sitting around with my son last night, and we were eating dinner. And I said, uh, what were the kids into these days at your high school? What are they listening to? What's the What's the music? And it was always you know, Cardi B and whatever the rich white people would, would support, you know, yeah. back then. And it was, um, <clears throat> it was all rap. He said, Oh, it's all country. Oh, wow. And I said, it's all country. And he goes, yeah, it's all country. Everyone's in the country. And I said, you like country? And he goes, no, I don't like, I don't like country. Like my son, he wants to listen to Pink Floyd and John Hyde and the Jayhawks and stuff. And he likes good bands. You Mm -hmm. know what I mean? He's like, yeah, I don't really get it. Like, I don't like country. 
And but hmm. also on the charts, it's like the top three songs on the charts are, are country. Yeah, it's shocking. It's not Wiz Khalifa anymore. Like it was dominated by all this, and it's. And I said, well, you know, to be fair, the rap is shit too. But I don't like. I've never liked country. I've never liked rap because I. To me, they're both kind of shit genres, and which isn't to say there's not good rap and there's not good country. It's just not a genre. The batting average is tough for me. Sure. And he said to me, you know, what do you what do you think this is about? And I said, I think what it's about is we're trying to force everybody into this new culture, and people are pushing back. The sheep are jumping over the fence, like we've discussed. You yeah. know, we're taking all these kids and we're forcing them into this fucked up culture and what's the opposite music is a metaphor of the culture music mm-hmm. is you know from the 60s with vietnam protest you know protest or uh, summer of love yeah, you know hate peace, ashbury no and stuff war. yeah punk you know what i mean like, right. like oh ronald reagan's in office we're creating a genre called punk fuck that yep you, you know what i mean he's got brill cream in his hair we're gonna put a we're gonna put a safety pin through our earlobe you know it's all just pushback right absolutely uh grunge you know pushback against hair bands right it's a cultural kind of pushback. Um, they're pushing back. They're going, you want to... So my son is kind of looking at me like kind of curiously, like, all right, that's an interesting observation. And I said one that I've used before, which is LA is trying to push everyone into a Prius. And that's why you see so many Dodge Ram pickup trucks with lift kits on them. Like there is a group that goes, fuck that. Yeah. And country music is a fuck that type of genre for being pushed into whatever target and bud light is and trying country to get is to counterculture to what the elites are pushing right now so joe it's biden counterculture to the culture right uh joe biden's pushing this that and the other thing and then country's coming out have you seen this guy uh his name is oliver anthony mm-hmm. this country song and he just filmed it by himself and that's the power of the internet now is one guy and his banjo in the backyard that song is number one he's got his dog Jason, in the wide shot <laughs> jason aldean is like number, number two. two so and taylor swift is like getting <clears throat> shoved down and they can't believe it because they've spent millions of dollars on these people and now the people have the power finally well you know let's drill down because you said um you know, counterculture or the culture. So, you know, if you really just think about it, who is the culture? Like sort of what is the culture? And the culture is like, it's LeBron James. LeBron. And it's Oprah. And the it's, view, it, the view. And, and it's, it's, it's surprisingly many black sort of the, the, the Obamas, mm-hmm. the, those are the culture. Those are the culture. Uh, Joe Biden sort of would have been the culture a few years ago, but everyone's sort of given up on him because he has dementia at this point. Mm. He's obviously like a weird narcissist, so they kind of cast him out a little. But the culture is is that. And if you take the view or you take the Obamas or you take LeBron James or you take Colin Kaepernick or whatever, you, you take the Jay-Z and Beyonce or whoever, though that's... That's the culture. Yeah, that's the royalty. All right. Do any of them listen to Hank Williams Jr. in their in their Denali? And the answer is no. The culture hates country music. Right. So country music is a pushback on the culture, and that's why, yes. The number one song right now on Billboard is Rich Men North of Richmond by country music right. uh, singer Oliver Anthony, who's never had a number one hit That's ever. who we're speaking of. Yeah, yeah. and it, it, this song's been described as a blue-collar anthem, an everyman anthem, and a right-wing anthem. Right, and here's why the culture hates that, because anything that's counter to let's transition kids makes you a right-wing extremist. Exactly. And it's like, no, no. This is the culture. It's a guy singing about hardworking people and wanting to hang on to some of their money and working a 40-hour week and wanting to be able to provide for the family. That's what the song's about. The song is about what the country is about. It's not, it's not a right-wing extremist counterculture punch. It's not even talking about religion or anything else. It's just talking about the middle class regular and blue issues. collar workers, regular issues, which those dickheads always claim to be a fan of <laughs> or never a fan of. They're never, they never stop talking about the middle class, but they never do shit for the middle class. And if someone comes out, there's no hero of the middle class that they ever embrace. 
Well, you love the middle class. Why not embrace the hero of the middle class? And this guy is the hero of it, and it's just cool to see who likes him and who doesn't. They do articles every every day on Facebook. Someone that's like, this song is uh, talk about a guy who doesn't get it. And right, this this it's got like three hundred million views in the last three days. I think he gets it. <laughs> well, that, and that's also the beauty of essentially corrupted entities like Rolling Stone magazine, which right. is you guys review music, or at least that was your job. This guy has captured the zeitgeist of America times mm. 2 billion views on YouTube. The lyrics are good. The song is nice. I've heard it a few times. And Rolling Stone is going to attack it. Now, doesn't that just tell us about your politics, Rolling Stone? That's what it is. Right. The, uh, the other uh, songs on the billboard, number two is Luke Combs doing a cover of Fast Car. Okay. All right. Morgan Wallen doing uh, last night, and then Taylor Swift for Cruel Summer. So there it's it's country, country, and country. Yeah. Pop. Then, oh, Taylor Swift country pop. I guess yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then what's next? She's pop. Yeah, and She's then uh, and then it goes to Selena Gomez and Olivia Rodrigo. Do yeah. So there's big industry on those guys four, five, six, seven, and they're just they're wondering how these independent artists are kind of beating them. They do not like that at all. Right. Well, just recently, two days ago, the L.A. Times had an opinion article, and just the title. <laughs> oh, I wonder how this went. <laughs> How right-wing country fave Oliver Anthony scored a number one hit. He wasn't a fave. Nobody knew his name. No, yeah. And he's not right-wing. He's now, not. Right. If you ask, well, first things first. Let's just do a sort of de facto thing. If you're going to say, um, I think uh, parents should raise their kids I think uh, we shouldn't be pushing 10-year-olds to transition. Uh, I think there should be less burdensome taxes and regulations so a small business could flourish. If that makes you right-wing, then so fucking be it at, th at this point. Yeah. If, I, if, if, if you're saying, uh, I'm for vax passports, you should be able to have to get vaccinated in order to return to your college campus or to return to your job, and it must be mandatory, and we'll put a a gold star on your jacket so we can identify you and I say I don't think that's a good idea and you announce that's right wing then then I'm right wing right call me right wing I think your Orwellian retarded ideas are bad yeah but they'll never say uh, the person demanding the vaccines and the star and this and that is far left wing or anything like that that's just mainstream that's main now. and that's culture and so what but what what will change it like when people are like Oh, man, when is this going to change? Well, what changes it is is always financial. Mm -hmm. So Bud Light. They've learned a lesson. They got bitch slapped. Yeah. Somebody told Bud Light to hold their Coors Light and then fucking <laughs> bitch slapped them. Okay. And and now uh, Kmart or whoever. Target. Target. Sorry. that As these companies go, they learn. Kmart it, learned a long time ago. And... and citizens of San Francisco who are told to work from home because it's too dangerous and yeah. the sidewalks are paved with human excrement, yeah. they're learning as well. And so people learn, and, and the music industry will learn as well if you check the charts and the top three spaces are taken by country music, then they will shift. So that's how the system changes. It doesn't change by you t trying to use logic or infuse logic into th into their world. It's you start taking away money or you start adding money. You add money. Uh, it's right. good to see, though, because uh, it, didn't Breitbart say that uh, politics is downstream of culture? So that's right. what we're doing. The col politicians just do whatever they think is where, you know, stick their finger in the air and lick it. But um, I also see Disney is wokeifying every movie. And then asking why we, what do you care? We just changed everything. And the new, uh, the actress for Snow White yes. is just like crapping on the source material. Yeah. We don't need a princess to be saved. Right. Like, well, then let's make a new movie then. What are we doing? So, yeah. And now back to finances. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're, you can't try to talk logic into woke companies because logic doesn't work on woke people because their stance is non-logical from the beginning. So back in the day, woke is the new religion. And so like back in the day, as an atheist, you could have an argument with a born again Christian. Like I used to argue with the born again gangbangers I worked with installing closets, but no argument worked because 
the, the genesis, pardon the pun, of their argument didn't really live on this planet. You know what I mean? Right. And so what a lot of the idiot woke people don't understand, who are all atheists, by the way, is their, their initial premises, their, their, their stance that they're having doesn't live on this planet. You know, you saying everybody, anyone who identifies as a male, regardless of whether they're pre-op, should be able to just use the locker room. That doesn't work. That, that doesn't live anywhere. There's there's no common sense in that doesn't work. So when you, you can't talk people out of bad ideas that are sort of spiritual, just like you can't talk a born-again Christian out of their stance, and woke is every bit the religion and it's nonsensical right. as the born again Christian, except for the woke would make fun of the born again Christian. <laughs> but it's they're the same idiots. Yeah, they're just they believe in a different god. So the only way to talk them talk Disney out of their shit is have no one show up to Snow White, and yeah. that is starting to happen now. They don't even have seven dwarves. I know that uh, wasn't. Uh, <laughs> you had Brad Williams on here, and he was kind of yes. upset about that. He wanted more work for dwarves, so. Yeah, yes. they're doing. Uh, they look like seven Portland residents who just kind of showed up on the yes. set. Yes, <laughs> maybe they had an open call in Portland. <laughs> yeah, just come on out, man. Oh, so it will. It'll work with Disney, just like it will work with Bud is. Light. Their stock is down, I think, like twenty five percent, and uh, they're just wondering. They're looking at maybe selling off ESPN or other pieces to kind of bring in capital. It's, it's really crazy because Disney is one of the strongest brands in America, but they're going too far away from what. That man envisioned, you know, 50 years ago. We all know better than him now. We went to college. We just came out. And that's what happened with the Bud Light. The girl just came out of college, maybe been out four or five years. She's going to change the brand because Bud Light's been doing it wrong for way too long. And now yeah, they've been doing it wrong for 150 years. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like Clydesdales. Yeah. And Ed McMahon as well. But yes, this is the problem. And, and I think we're going to have to come to a point where... A few years ago, if some celebrity or somebody who was heading some movie was going to go out and do a presser, mm -hmm. and it was, uh, let's just say, I'll bet you, uh, what's his name from Guardians of the Galaxy? Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt. All right. When the first Guardians of the Galaxy came out, somebody probably said to Chris Pratt during the presser, when prepping for the presser, at uh, don't talk about religion and don't talk about hunting. <laughs> don't talk about those. Those will be tells. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll know you're conservative and they don't want to hear it. Just kind of stick with the movie and stick with the whatever. Sure. And so anybody who's right leaning or conservative or religious and in the celebrity world, it's even unspoken. They know not to talk about any. You know, okay. Uh, Tim Allen. Uh, next, when we're pr doing the presser for uh, Santa Claus, weave in the fact that you voted for Trump. <laughs> See how it goes. Yeah. See if you're not fucking destroyed, right? Mm -hmm. But at this point, we're going to have to work the other direction a little too, which yeah. is going to be, hey, dumb bitch who's 23, keep your fucking politics out of this fucking presser. Because the left laid it on thick. Every single a a Academy Award speech, just a full, full left wing a, a, for a dissertation and everyone and they they did it with impunity mm -hmm. somebody's gonna have to tell them now this other side is angry and yeah. will fuck you up too yeah. and boycott your shit so just kind of keep the personal woke progressive shit and out that's of how i speech. always knew who was a moderate or conservative in hollywood if they say i don't really get into politics boom that's my tell and if they go on to like here's what we need to do about abortion this that, and the other i'm like okay that's just standard in hollywood they can just say whatever they want Yes. Yeah, we get that sometimes when, when guests come on. They'll, they'll before the interview, we'll get a note like, "I don't want to speak about politics." Boom. There's yeah. your tell. <laughs> right. Right. Everyone knows where Mark Ruffalo stands. No right. one knows where Jay Leno stands, and that's just fine. Mark yeah. Ruffalo has been decidedly absent over the past couple of years, though, hasn't he? I don't Can know. He He's always whining about he something. Was, he was whining about stuff before the last two years of complete and utter chaos. Mm-hmm. And oh. I haven't seen him tweet anything in a while. Well, 
again, what it's going to do is shift it around, which is, uh, hey, Ant-Man or whoever the fucking movie, The Roach or whatever the shitty movies these guys are in, The Hulk. I, I don't know. He's The Hulk. He's Paul Hulk. Rudd is Ant-Man. All mm. right, whatever. It's for <laughs> fucking 10-year-olds. It's just for 10-year-olds, not for adults. But the point is, is we saw what happened to Bud Light. We saw what happened to Kmart. We saw what happened to Target. And we see what's happening with Disney. Mm-hmm. Fucking zip it. Yeah. We don't hear any of your shit. Basically... When they booted Gina Carano, they were fucking drunk on their own spunk. They were like, we can just fucking fire anybody we want at any time for not saying that anything anytime. Like, we, we go like, hey, uh, give us your pronouns. Like, I, I don't want to give my pronouns. Do it, bitch, Ooh. or we'll fucking fire your ass. Like, that's what they did. And that's by the way, did. this is why those people cannot be given an ounce more of power, because they've shown us what they do when they get it, yeah. which is they will happily destroy everything. Anybody or any city or any entity, they they can. You push back against them, they go full Comanche and fuck your shit up. So mm-hmm. I cannot trust them, just like you can't trust the powers in Los Angeles for COVID-based stuff anymore. Like, you you guys get a little power and you go fucking ape shit. Yep. So they've shown their hand, but they're kind of zipping it now because the other side got so fucking beat up that eventually they sort of regrouped and went, all right, we got to push back. So this is going to happen. I just hope people don't forget. I mean, the lockdowns were insane. Um, you had the, Gavin Newsom going to a restaurant and shutting down other restaurants down here. It was just, uh, it was it was a mess. And as a comedian, it, they labeled us non-essential, which is like the worst thing to be called non-essential. <laughs> like, you're just like, what? And uh, my dad's been saying that for years, but... <laughs> So, uh, and then we were doing like illegal comedy shows, like people were getting around it, but it was just kind of like underground stuff going on. So, right. How disappointed were you at the comedic community at large for being such colossal pussies? Totally. Because I mean, this, our job is to speak out like court jesters tell the king he's wearing no clothes and so forth. So I was just like, okay, no one else is going to do it. And that's when my YouTube channel went up tenfold. Like I just got all the subscribers, like free money on the table right here. I'll make fun of Saturday Night Live. They should be making fun of Joe Biden every Saturday. They did it with Trump, but they just won't. So I'm like, all right, I'll take that. I'll do this. And so my my career has uh, benefited from it. So thank you, Radical Left. Yeah, capitalized on it. Yeah. yeah, I mean, if you if there was ever a president you could make fun of, right. it was Joe Biden. <laughs> ever. Even in my act, I, I joke about Trump, but just uh, stuff that people enjoy about him. How he just he would do a press conference with no teleprompter, and just the stuff he would tell us was very transparent. I'm like, are we allowed to know this? It's like a <laughs> nuclear secret, you know? And then with Biden, he can't even get through the teleprompter. So I always say we should sit him down and read it to him as a bedtime story. You know what I always uh, what I find insane about Biden, and I don't. I mean, <clears throat> I'd really kind of like to know how this works. So. There's a lot of conspiracy theories out there in terms of like who's really running the White House, you know, and there's some deeper conspiracy theories, which is it's basically Obama's in his third term. Mm -hmm. And (laughs) if you go even deeper, it's like, oh, Obama never left Washington. He got a house nearby (laughs) and he he, that's one of his residents. And it's like, oh, and how how involved is Obama? Because. Or anybody, because it wouldn't take anything for them to go up and go, okay, here's what we're doing now, Joe, and then then just leave. You know what I mean? You go, all right. phone from the owner's box to that dugout. Well, first yeah, off. I like that. What is, yeah, what, right. Okay. Let's, let's look at it this way. Let, let's see if we can deconstruct this. I'll tell you what. Let's take a break, and then we're going to break it down. We'll do that right after this. Let me tell you about. One of our greatest sponsors, Lear Capital. I know you spend a lot of time laughing on the podcast, but uh, I've launched into this partnership with Lear Capital and I'm starting to really feel the need to be serious just for a minute. I'm sitting here holding some coins that were sent to me by our new partner, Lear Capital. And I don't know if you've heard about BRICS. BRICS is a group of countries, including Russia and China, that are spearheading a devaluing of the dollar as a global currency. Yes, these are scary times we're living in. They're discussing a new trade currency between nations backed by gold. This may, this may explain why Russia, India, and China have all been collecting so much gold lately. When you peel back the onion just a little bit, 
you may need to take a look at gold for your own portfolio. Do me a favor. Call 800-498-6450. Mention my name and ask for a free investment guide. Educate yourself and learn more about diversifying or even beginning a portfolio plan. That's 800-498-6450. And mention my name, Adam Carolla. These guys are a great sponsor. You want to let them know where you heard this. 800-498-6450. Drop my name. That's Lear Capital. Let me tell you about Angie, homeowners. You know, it's a lot of work to own a home. Whether it's uh, everyday maintenance, repairs, or dream projects, it can be hard to even know where to start. All you need is Angie. You're home for everything home. Find a skilled local pro who will deliver quality and experience. Over 20 years of home service experience. Bring them your project online or with the Angie app. Answer a few questions and Angie handles the rest. Look, you're busy. You don't have time to do all this stuff. Let Angie handle it. Take care of just about any home project in just a few taps. Download the free Angie mobile app today or visit online. Visit Angie.com. That's A-N-G-I dot com. A-N-G-I dot com. That's Angie. Let them do all the heavy lifting. Kayvon is here. Yes. The comedian. And you can go to k-vonncomedy.com because he's doing shows all over the place. Um, all right. So let's let's just break down the game film. First things mm. first. Um I don't think that me or anybody else, and let's just make it a thought experiment. Could you tell Bill Maher or Joe Rogan or Tucker Carlson what to say or Elon Musk? Could you tell them, look, here's what we're doing. I know you think the border should be beefed up. That's not what's going to come out of your mouth. You know, that's not going to be your policy. You got now. Listen up, and then <laughs> let's talk about you know college loans being refunded. Uh, this is what you're going to say. And and here's what: Do you believe that you could tell Tucker Carlson, Joe Rogan, Bill Maher, um, Elon Musk, or, or uh, Ben Shapiro, or like any any intellect who has opinions? And who was sort of, you know, they're basically independently wealthy. Everyone's rich. You know what I mean? Could you feed them lines that they, could you say, hey, Adam Carolla, you for school choice? Yeah, I am. Not anymore, bitch. (laughs) Now, here's what you got to say. Soften that up. I'd go, I'm fucking not saying it. I would never. So you couldn't tell people who have thoughts Mm -hmm. and and then sort of concise thoughts and ideas what to say. Okay. That's number one. values they believe in. Right. Number two is Joe Biden that person would would you go mm. oh you know all the i mean you got rogan you got tucker carlson you got joe biden you got all the great thinkers in, in humanity like would anyone include joe biden in a group of independent thinkers who is going to follow his soul <laughs> that's exactly why he was selected right that's okay and, and, they, and they put uh flowers on his neck and sent him to hawaii and it yeah. just looked like <laughs> weekend at bernie's goes to hawaii yeah just he didn't like even know cool. what he was doing there so okay so and if you go back and watch footage of him, you know, he's for gay marriage, he's against gay marriage, yeah. he's yeah. for he's tough, a on, he's tough on crime guy and crack and wants to play, now he wants to liberate the prisons. I mean, go back and look, you, you can go back and look through my entire career, there's not 10 seconds of me going, oh, I love passion fruit iced tea. Now he's against it. You know, totally consistent all the time. Sure. So Joe Biden has a 10 cent head. And he's proven historically that he is willing to toggle any direction he wants. Right. Go right back on everything and go forward with everything or do do that. All right. So we have great groundling. Yes. Uh, Yes. Yes. And yes. And he has. Yeah. But at the end of the scene, you got to figure out how to leave the stage. (laughs) And that is one of the components of being a groundling. (laughs) So. All right. So he has he. Will go any direction anyone wants him to go, hmm. and he has a ten cent head in terms of thoughts and 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 okay. Now let's talk integrity. 
That fucker will lie about anything at any time. I mean, that clip of him going on with his Fulbright scholarship and three majors and the top of his law class, all lies. And that was before any iota of dementia crept yeah, right. into his hair-plugged skull. He laid it on so thick. Yep. 30 years before any... You cannot blame dementia, and you can't blame Hunter Biden being a junkie. He was a flat-out liar yep. way back when. One of his big campaign speeches was that his wife got hit by a drunk driver, and it turned out he was... The guy was not drunk driving, and his wife blew the, the stop sign. And he used that, like, I know what it's like to lose a, a wife to a DUI guy who left one a couple pops after work. And then they, they kept telling him, stop saying that. I All right. Sue that's you that's a good that. point. So yeah. now let's let's see if we can check some boxes in terms of how corruptible a president can be or how, how many strings can be pulled around him. Okay. All right. Uh, now, at some point, you get back to character. All right. Now, now, if, I, if let's say you're not that smart and let's say you got a little dementia creeping in and let's say maybe you tell a tall tale every once in a while, but you have super high character and character would, would kind of prevent this is as, as well, or at least slow it down. Yes. His family was killed by a guy driving a truck. He was consistently told to stop saying the guy drank his lunch. Right. He was not drunk. It wasn't even the guy's fault. Mm -hmm. The guy grieved about it, and his daughters would say, stop saying he was drunk. This is our dad. He wasn't drunk. And he would continue to say they're killed by a drunk driver, just like he would continue to say that his son died in Iraq when he died and stateside mm -hmm. of, of cancer. Yep. And now he's talking about his house in Delaware catching on fire to all the grieving Hawaiians. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. and he almost lost his Corvette. <laughs> and his cat. His house did not catch on fire. His kitchen had a small kitchen fire in it and was under control within 20 minutes and he wasn't there. All right. So now in terms of morality, check that box. He can lie. He can do whatever he wants. So with all those things in place... Is it an impossibility that somebody could be setting um, the – someone could be giving him his marching orders, setting policy? Yeah, he's just the face. Did you see that they tweeted? It's now getting probable now. They accidentally tweeted from Corrine Jean-Pierre's Twitter. When I became president, I did this, this, and yeah. this, and now we've done it. And so the same person – you know, they have multiple accounts. Mm -hmm. And that's not uncommon. You know, at your company, you might have multiple people tweeting, but – it is uncommon that, at least with Trump, you knew he tweeted it from his toilet or his bedroom that night was something he was mad about. Yeah, that's like my misspellings. <laughs> yeah, those misspellings, you know, were, misspellings are embarrassing. And I, I like go, it. that's how they know it's me. That's how you know. You've got to keep a little bit of misspellings. When it was perfectly curated and it was from jean Pierre Pierre, whatever her account's name is, I was like, yeah, that just proves Biden is not behind the wheel. It's weekend at Bernie's goes to Maui. Right. So now maybe somebody is calling the shots okay and it feels that way from a policy standpoint because he was supposed to be sort of mi mr middle of america and we're not getting any of that we're getting the furthest left we've ever gone from a president talking about white supremacy every time he gets behind a lectern the white supremacy in this country will take us down that comes straight out of the college right uh, you know doctrine or from someone who just graduated and is writing his speeches and he'll read whatever's on the teleprompter so it's pretty sad because nordstrom's was not robbed by a bunch of white supremacists last week no well there's not enough of it to go around so they're basically classifying it they're kind of doing you know anytime like you go there's only so many truffles and they're hard to find. At some point, China goes, we'll make fake truffles. <laughs> and then we'll say they're truffles. That's and then true. you can have truffles. Yeah, yeah. And there's not enough white supremacy sniffing pigs to find enough of it out there. So they're essentially actively trying to create it. Yep. And that's <laughs> scary. A couple false starts Some there. Synthetic, uh, Juicy small It's scary when you're finding cultured white supremacy because... You've now gotten the FBI and the CIA involved with root, finding white supremacy where it doesn't exist. Right. And Creating it. now we're having an issue because those people are being incarcerated and having their, uh, their, yeah. their rights uh, oh, absolutely. impeded on.
Like you go January 6th, if you walked in the building after the doors were wide open, they're considering you one of the white supremacists who stormed the Capitol to take over our government. I don't think that's what grandma's plans were with her crocheted uh, red, white, and blue scarf. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's interesting and curious times that, mm-hmm. we're, that we're living in. But it's also um, sort of way more... Um, dangerous than people think like mm-hmm. basically the concept is is very scary and dangerous which is to say you announce there's this it could be white supremacy it could be could be anything mm-hmm. and then and then you weaponize your DOJ and your CIA and your FBI and you go all right I said there's a bunch of this shit that didn't exist now go make Go make me right. Go yeah. find it somewhere. Go, go find it. some church where they're talking about something and shut it down. Or go find whoever protests in front of the abortion clinic and go arrest that guy. Like, go find this. Everybody who walked into the Capitol on uh, on the 6th, go, go arrest those people. Mm-hmm. And, by the way, don't let them out on bail. We need, we need numbers here. Yeah. Go fuck them up. Then we'll appoint a commission. We'll have a blue ribbon commission, but we're not going to have anybody on it who's going to ask any questions. So we're going to dump all those people, start our own commission, and then we're going to doctor the tape or selectively use the tape to make ourselves right, and then we're going to put all those people in prison. And then we're going to lose two terabytes of information before right. anybody Right, then we'll destroy yeah, it. No one yeah. else will look at it. And then when somebody raises their hand and go, is this commission looking into how we prevent this from happening again? No, that's not on the table. We're just looking in at uh, whatever Trump's involvement was. We're getting into some scary territory totally. as, a, as a nation, and it doesn't matter whether you like Trump or not. You should not want to enter this territory. Right. That's what I keep saying to everyone. It's like, yeah, fuck Trump. Lock him up. It's like, don't, don't, no, no. You don't want to go here. Mm-hmm. I know you don't like Trump, right? but you don't want to stray into this territory. So we've we've broken it all down. So now is Barack Obama secretly running the White House? That is the conspiracy theory. There's a tape of him. <laughs> yeah. Now again, this is not a conspiracy. Th- I mean, first off, there are things people do right and left, and a lot of it falls on the head. And I'm like, okay, you know. But there's a tape of him going. His idea, his like dream job, would be staying home and setting policy not showing up at the events or, you know, christenings or the military academy or something. Yeah. <laughs> but if you ask me, I would say the same thing about any job I've ever had. Just phone it so, in. So, but he, there is tape of him doing an interview where he goes, I'd like to just sit in my living room and like, you know, pull, pull strings, like tell him do this and do that. That's all our, it's all our, our fantasies. Yeah. Right. I'd like to do comedy from my bathroom <laughs> at home. Yeah. You, you know what I mean? So, but he did say that, and he didn't move out of Washington. Everybody moves. As soon as they're done being the president, they, they yeah, leave. Bush is on a farm in Texas. Right, right. He got a place and, and stayed. So it's <laughs> yep, yep. something. Mm, <laughs> well, like I, something there. like I said, with like a, a, like a, let's say a celebrity who is a conservative in the movie industry will never say it. And so uh, we have not heard from Barack Obama a whole lot. And Mm -hmm. the less we hear from him, the more I think he's running things. Yeah. Well, first off, with uh, with Zoom, it's perfectly doable (laughs) these days. Um, And then second, so the other thing too is Obama's much more left and much more radical than he should sort of let on. Yeah. Like I think people said, like, "Hey, first black president, not a, you know." Let's stay away from the Louis Farrakhan shit. Let's kind of tack toward the middle here. You know, we got to get a lot of white Americans to vote you in. They're going to think you're Black Panther or something, you know. Exactly. But, you know, he went to Reverend Wright's church for 20 years, who's a fucking anti-Semitic, super radical guy. Mm-hmm. I mean, he went to his church for 20 years. I. And then when he got in office, he's like, I don't really know. Distance, yeah, I don't really distance, know the guy. Distance. But <laughs> I wouldn't go to church at all. But if I went to a church and the you know the guy's sermon started uh, beating up on the asians or something i'd go oh fuck this i'm not coming back next next sunday he he went there so he's a lot more into this than he lets on he has to tone it down mm-hmm. in that direction just like 
Tim Allen needs to tone it down <laughs> in the other direction. I mean, sure, Tim Allen is probably a, a lot more um, right wing than he could ever say. Sure. But the counterpart is Obama's a lot more left wing than he could ever say, because he has to be this sort of middle voice of reason, kind of like he's a Democrat, but he's not for the crazy shit he could never talk about. Again, you can't he 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 goes to Reverend Wright's church for 20 years. But as soon as he gets as soon as he starts running for president, he's like, hey, I don't I don't really know that guy. Yeah. Like, I, So why is he saying that? You know, why isn't he going, yeah, I went to guy's church for 20 years. I agree with almost everything he says. Like, no, somebody told him, you got to get away from that. You got to run run toward the middle. So he's a lot more left-wing and a lot more radical, a lot more whatever right. than, than we would think. And you're right, he's been kind of quiet. So you're kind of wondering <laughs> what he's doing. Too quiet. We always look for the, the dogs that are not barking. Yeah, so. but then... Are these his, his ideas? Did he want to pull out of Afghanistan? Does he want the border to well, be open? I like Dinesh he... D'Souza quite a bit, and he, he talks quite a bit about uh, how Obama wasn't able to do everything. Like, just like what you were saying, he wasn't able to do everything he wanted to, and now he's watching Joe Biden getting all this credit for being this far-left, you know, crazy progressive, and he's like, this was my dream. Mm. So unless he's getting that wrong, and this is his dream, so he just didn't want to be the face of it. Um, all right. Switching topics, uh, unless uh, I don't know, Dawson. You can look around, but there is a there's an article out there with Obama. The other Obama conspiracy theory is basically the the Hunter Biden Joe Biden thing. Oh yeah, it's not Hunter Biden Joe Biden. It's Hunter Biden Joe Biden Obama. Like it, oh. it'll get to Obama because oh. Obama was the president, the big, he was the guy. vice president. He's, <laughs> He's going the one to Ukraine. Who set up Joe Biden as the guy in Ukraine, right? Yeah. Right. So, and, and if he mm-hmm. didn't know things, then he's stupid. If he did know, he's a liar. But the theory is sort of the press and everyone else who we think is protecting Joe Biden is actually protecting Obama. They look at they're not interested in Biden. He's a He's an old kook with oatmeal for brains. Like, they're not big fans of his. Sure. But they worship at the altar of a Biden. And if this thing gets to, uh, sorry, Obama. Obama. Yep. Oh, Biden. <laughs> no, I've created Obama. the worst president in the United States. <laughs> Mega president. <laughs> Frankenstein. Uh, Chewbacca. Uh, <laughs> yes. Chewbacca. Uh, oh, Biden was what Sarah Palin called. Oh. Biden. In that debate, really, Chewbacca O Biden, Chewbacca O Biden. <laughs> oh. That sounds like a Star Wars <laughs> I made character. A, I made him a Reese's peanut butter cup of horrible policy. I like Chewbacca O Biden. He got Gina Carano kicked off. Yeah, that'll be a good uh, Photoshop. So some of the conspiracy theory is is we can't get this to Joe because if it gets to Joe, it gets to O. Okay. And that's, oh. Now we got to nip got it. At, we got to nip it at Joe so it doesn't get to O. Well, so but if you really think about it. People go, I mean, do the math. Like you go, Hunter Biden, what's this guy doing? Hey, he's traveling on Air Force Two and he's going to Ukraine. And he's getting money from China and oligarchs and Russia and everything. You go, how the fuck's, he's a junkie. What, how's this work? <laughs> oh, his dad is Joe Biden. Oh, well, what the hell's Joe Biden doing then, right? Like that's a logical totally. next leap. So then you keep doing that math and you go, well, who's Joe Biden working for? Obama. There you go. Oh. Well, then why is Biden allowed to set all this stuff up? And then, but Biden's a, I mean, Obama's a president. So it does, it is a kind of logical bridge that you would, you built the bridge from Hunter Biden to Joe Biden pretty easily. Yeah. You could also build the bridge from Biden to Obama. And they weren't, or at least they'll start to work on construction of the bridge as soon as they finish the bridge to Biden. Yeah, they were not even expecting Hillary to lose, and as right. soon as she did, um, she closed down the Clinton Foundation. Like, right. why do you have to close down your charity the second you didn't become president? So I'm seeing the bridge took a little right. took a little four year delay, which we have a lot in construction. All right, so now on to other subjects, please. Two, and you guys tell me what you think of this tactic. Uh, I'm wandering around my house and I see this uh, avocado spray. It's avocado oil spray. Somebody's got to make guacamole spray. Someone's got to do like a cheese whiz with guac. 
good guac. I think Taco Bell has that. <laughs> I just they fire it. Well, they don't give a, us the gun. It's in a caulking gun, yeah. but yeah. I fire it. So um, I'm in my house, Jeez. and I see this can of oil that you'd coat the pan with before you cooked, and it's uh, avocado oil, which is good, coconut oil, which is healthy, good, and I can't tell you guys enough that the data of why is everyone fat now will be directly tied to all this fucking horrible oil, which is it's in it's in house paint now. Mm-hmm. Like there's you cannot escape this oil. There is no salad dressing. There's no chip. There's no stuff that advertises itself as healthy. Like somebody brought me some like healthy seed pop nuts or something. And my son's friend was like, I'm into health and nutrition. I'm on these things. And I turn around and look down. It's like canola oil. Right at the top. Everything. So I'm now, I now have to do with ingredients what I do with CNN, where they go, did you hear there was a hate crime in Alabama? I go, okay, hold on. Hold on. Let me see what this hate crime was. You know, I have to stop and go read the ingredients, right? So there's this can of avocado spray oil. I'll get the picture of it up there somewhere, God willing. And it's got a big, the front of it, please, idiots. The big reveal. Yes. The, the picture of it is a picture of an avocado. And then, it's, and then it says Goodness. avocado. And it says organic in big, big letters. And, and I start reading down on it. And it's organic. It's chosen. And it's the company, and it... This looks super healthy. It looks right. super healthy. Organic. Right? Yeah, it looks expensive. Organic. Yeah. It says avocado. Like whole foods oil. Yeah, whole foods. Coconut. And what's that? Uh, or- safflower. Yeah. Sunflower. Safflower. Safflower. Yeah. Wow. Safflower. Okay. So you would think those are the three ingredients, right? You would think. Well, at least but if that- you look at the picture... There's it's a, a huge big green avocado. Yeah. Like that's right. the only color you're seeing. Everything else just outlined. Right. Okay, right. Okay. And I'm looking at it and I go, safflower oil. Fuck. <laughs> it's they're putting safflower oil in avocado oil. Is basically where we're at. We're it's it's so ubiquitous. We're so polluted. It's now just like plastic parts and fish you know what i mean it's like there is nothing in the sea that doesn't have 14 percent plastic in them because it's just there now you know and so i get the can and i'm reading it and i'm like oh, safflower oil first off uh, again i'm not for big government and big regulation but can we at least agree that you shouldn't be able to put a giant picture of an avocado on your thing, say organic and avocado oil, and have it not be that? Then I turned it to the back, and I read the ingredients on the back of the can, mm-hmm. which is the first picture you put up there. And the ingredients are organic, high ulceic, ol- I don't know how to safflower. So the ingredients are number one, safflower oil, mm-hmm. number two, avocado oil, and number three, coconut oil. Now, when I was looking at the front of the can, I was like, well, at least safflower oil's at the bottom. At least it goes avocado oil, coconut oil, then safflower. Mm-hmm. On the cover, they listed it last. Yes. They were hiding. Oh, oh, okay. Should this be legal? To give the list of ingredients in the inverse order on the front yes. of the can. And when I talked to my Guatemalan nanny, <laughs> and I said to her, Olga, well, don't buy this shit. It's got seven. She goes, I was just looking for the avocado That's oil. What it's they're trickery. Doing. Well, it's tomfoolery is what it is. Yes. It's skullduggery. <laughs> it's worse than trickery. Oh, it is. We're into skullduggery, skullduggery. now. <laughs> now, what they figured out is two things. Mm-hmm. Half the people in this country don't speak English anymore, and the other half are so dug into their fucking phones staring at TikTok that, oh, <laughs> we see a picture of an avocado, and we're like, oh, yeah, 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 boom, yeah healthy. I'll get it. So not only is there a big picture of an avocado on there, yeah. but avocado oil, is you're advertising this as avocado. It is the last oil, mm. ingredients-wise, it's in there. They should have like a pie chart. You can only have as big as... What amount of oil is in there? How big the avocado is on the front? And the safflower should be the biggest thing on the front. What is a safflower? Nobody knows. Uh. And do we need sunflower and safflower? 
And look, people get mad about this when you when you see a movie poster. It's like, oh, Robert Redford starring, right? In this, and he makes a cameo in like minute forty eight for two minutes, and then he's gone, and you're upset right. that you didn't see him. We so we need to regulate this somehow because everybody I know is getting burned. So I basically <laughs> tell everybody. Do not, this fucking seed oil is in everything. And mm. they go, oh, that's why I got the I got the avocado oil mayonnaise. And I go, give me that oh, thing. Let boom. me look at it. No. You can't. Like, I, I, I go to Ralph's looking for avocado oil stuff. And yeah, you look at the ingredients. And 99% of the oils have canola oil as a first ingredient. Or right. vegetable oil. Yeah. So, All right. Now, let me, let me just ask you on a more personal side humanistic standpoint so what i do and it's what i always do but people don't let me do it which is i'll sit around on a sunday and i'll be reading this can of safflower oil liquid spray on poison Mm -hmm. and i will think i'm not going to be here when the nanny shows up tomorrow i'm going out of town or something but i want to kind of convey to her don't Read this scan. Don't do this. Read the ingredients, right? So what I'll do is I'll always take the can and I'll just put it somewhere weird. Mm. Like I'll set it upright on the floor in the middle of the kitchen. Oh, wow. And then at some point I'll come home and it'll just be right back on top, like in the yeah. in, in the in the little bin where all the cans are. And then I'll pull it out again uh-huh. and I'll set it inside of the sink. And then at some point, I'll come home, and it'll be right, right back. And then at some point, I'll duct tape it to the fucking dog. <laughs> and at some point, it'll get pulled out and get back to this. And I keep putting it at these weird places because I'm trying to say to this person, look at this, or let's have a conversation about it. But what they do is they go, why did Adam take the can and put it in the tank of the toilet? I'll get it out, oh, well. and I'll put it back. And oh, it's like... Adam. <laughs> It's like I'm you're putting setting up it blues there. clues. Yes, <laughs> I'm doing this yeah. thing because I want to have a conversation. Let's and I'll, I have it. Oftentimes, I'll take things. And if, like, I'll put my keys in the refrigerator if I don't want to forget some food that I'm trying to take uh, home. And I'll find that somebody found the keys, oh, put them took back. them out, went, I don't know why he's putting his keys in the refrigerator, but I'll put them on the desk. Like, I do things and then people undo them. But it should click there's no deductive reasoning. Which people, I, right? Have you had this full conversation with a Guatemalan nanny, or are you just expecting her to pick up on the uh, oils placed around the home? <laughs> I do it so somebody goes, what is uh, what is here? Then it launches you into one of your... Yeah, like 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 with Hansel and Gretel, you wouldn't go, oh, they hate breadcrumbs. <laughs> you go, like, maybe they're leaving breadcrumbs uh, is a clue. But you wouldn't break down the breadcrumbs. Like, this person's got a hole in the breadcrumb pocket. <laughs> They're leaving all these breadcrumbs. Your you know maid I mean? would clean up behind Hansel and Gretel leading to their death. That's what Like all happen. those movies where the guys, the chick's being abducted and she's being dragged out to the woods. And at some point she, like, pulls off a swatch of her sweater and hangs it on the tree. And yeah. no one finds it goes... That's a tree sweater. Yeah. <laughs> they go, oh, she's nearby. Yeah. She's sick. She's sending a clue. You know what I mean? Me taking this can of, of a pan spray and just setting it on the floor in the middle of the kitchen <laughs> should make you go, what is this? Why, why was this here? So we did have, but it always gets dutifully put back, which That's I kind of like That's that. That's a nice sign. But it's still kind of weird that I would set it like upside down on the windowsill or something. I yeah, I feel like as a good nanny, like you could have a body in your kitchen and she would just kind of take Sweep care of that for you. Yeah. Well, we finally, we did have the conversation oh, last and, night. And she's all in. Yeah. She, she got duped. <laughs> she saw the giant picture of the avocado. Like uh, our own Mike Dawson saw the giant picture of the cauliflower, the, oh no, the broccoli on the green machine. Right. Juice, oh, yeah. Right. And then what What? What uh, ingredient is that? Number 74? Ah, uh, no, it's like 19. Four, I don't know. <laughs> no. <laughs> I oh, just blend straight broccoli now. Yeah. It's Usually not, carrot juice has a lot of like orange juice or other things in it, the one I get. Yeah. The the green machine who got sued and had to change their label. Yeah. Right. Because like the, all the vegetables are in the forefront of the image, of the mm. cover. Yeah. But once we look down the label, broccoli was way the fuck down there. I don't think it was four. 
Yeah, I, I think it was like I, thir- I was like it was like thirteen or something. But there are certain clues, which is when I said to uh, Dawson, "How's a green machine taste?" and he said, "Good." <laughs> that, that, that's, there's that's, that clue. That's first clue. Yeah, I like. Second that. <laughs> clue is tastes good because broccoli tastes like shit. What's it taste like? And it goes pineapple. <laughs> and I go, okay. Well, that's another clue as and to why this juice. doesn't have that much yep, broccoli, broccoli in it. But uh, the moral of the story is: get your jeweler's loop, read the shit out of every ingredient. Now, fuck the giant avocado on the front page. Turn it to the back page, and go look for the ingredients. And when whoever L.A. Times, New York Times, or CNN tells you a story. Go look into it. And that'll apply to, to everything now. There we go. Avocado oil, politics, he melted they, it together. I infused all, them beautifully. <laughs> all Tom Fuller. A lot of safflower in that. Yeah. Some skullduggery. I went, I went to uh, Subway, and they're like, you know, like, oh, you want some olive oil on the sandwich? And then they put olive oil on it, but if you look closely, it's olive oil blend. Oh. And it's mainly, like, vegetable oil with, like, yes. a touch of olive oil in it. It's, 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 look, here's, here's the... The dilio, like if they could take styrofoam packing peanuts and s- step on their uh, their egg salad with it, they would. Like if, if if they can if they can make like you go, you just sprinkle a little few shots of that oil on. What did that save you? You right. know, the difference between a real olive oil and olive oil that's been stepped on with vegetable oil. And it's like for your sandwich, four cents. Mm-hmm. But we got the grand three hundred thousand yeah. franchisees, and we make a thousand of these a day. So go uh, ahead and do that. Now. I've noticed with the rental cars, when I get in them now, it's not quite on full. It's like right at full, <laughs> but you know damn well when you fill up a rental car, it goes way past the F. Yeah. So I think there's a big uh, rental car conspiracy with the. Uh, you know, the one gallon short, maybe. Yeah, especially Mike. August, Multiply that by all the rental cars. Yeah. How many well, mil- no, look, you know, a two by four was two by four. It's one and a half by three and a half. And if you want to know more, a two by four is one and a half by three and a half. Mm-hmm. A two by six is one and a half by five and a half. By the time you get to a two by 12, that's one and a half by like 11 and a quarter. Like they've oh. shaven another. They know when we get taller, we can take a little, we we'll take even a little more off. So, yeah. every anyone who deals in volume, like mm-hmm. that's the way everyone needs to think. Like I never go to Subway because I know they deal in such great volume that they're going to shave every tenth off of everything they can shave, which is going to end up in the unhealthy category right. or the bad category. Mm-hmm. So everyone who deals in if you're a warehouser and you make 200 million sheets of plywood a year, you're going to shave a 16th off because you're dealing with volume. Right. That's why I make my own plywood. I lay it up. <laughs> oh, yeah. You glue it all together. Curing time is like six months. Yeah. But that is for quality stuff. $300 in materials for half yeah. inch, 400 for three quarter. But I know what I'm... Yeah. Yeah. Made with love. All right. We'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll do the news right after this. Let me tell you about O'Reilly Auto Parts. Wow. You want to save some money? You want to save some gas? Here's a few things you can do to improve your fuel mileage. Check your tire pressure, people. If the tire pressure is low and one or more tires, you're going to use a lot more gas. Check out your owner's manual or inspect the tire yourself to find the recommended pressure. O'Reilly Auto Parts carries a wide range of tire gauges to make it easy to check your tires on a regular basis. It's also a lot safer when they're properly inflated. Always keep your fuel system clean. A fuel injector or carburetor cleaner is a simple, affordable way to remove carbon deposits and moisture from the fuel system and can improve the performance and efficiency of your engine. How about changing a clogged air filter? As an air filter clogs with dirt and debris, airflow becomes restricted and cause your vehicle's fuel management system to use more gas. Changing clogged filters increases the amount of air available to your engine, which boosts your fuel economy. For all the money-saving gas tips you need this summer, ask the professional parts people at O'Reilly Auto Parts or go to O'ReillyAuto.com. Well, I just want to tell you about a quick podcast study here. As you know, by now, we all do our very best to align the right sponsors with the podcast. 
It's a lot of work behind the scenes, and I'm incredibly grateful for your support. We're currently running a quick survey at podcaststudy.com, and we're giving the first 150 people a $10 digital Amazon gift card as incentive to complete the survey. The information we hear from you about our sponsors is incredibly important to the show, and we can't thank you enough for taking a few minutes to help us out. Upon completion of the survey, you'll be asked to include your email address, and we'll send the first 150 people a $10 gift card from Amazon. Go to podcaststudy.com, and thanks again for helping our show and our sponsors. Back with Kay Vaughn. Stand-up comedian, dates all over the country, taking the country back in the name of sanity. We got news. Yeah. Let me hear your first story, because there's also something else I want to complain about. Okay. Um, Prigozhin, that guy who led that Russian coup, yeah. was in a private jet, and it crashed, and everybody what? on board is dead. What? Mm. Hmm. <laughs> I may want to talk about sex in the city. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs> Are, 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 what is this what, foul play? Sex in the City, a show that hasn't been on air, <clears throat> and just like that, pardon me, Your Highness. Oh, the the new, <laughs> okay, the new the iteration, oh, which okay. is hot off the yeah, griddle. Yeah, this is hot off the griddle. Sure. So, do we do we think is are we are we do we think there was skullduggery involved yes. with the plane Major, crashing? Yeah, yeah. It's obvious. Yeah, let's talk about Sex in the City. No, uh, yeah, it was it was shot down. But go ahead. It was go shot ahead. down. <laughs> Who cares? You said it crashed. What, what is what does Samantha I, have to do, say? Do you have do you have news about it getting shot down? Do you have actual you reports? Said it was I, it's, I only it's, heard it crashed. It's it, it's crashed. But it, I'm I'm it's trying I'm trying to sell quotes. the story here. Yeah, All it, right. it's very. It's I'll hear a little of it. But if I grow weary. <laughs> I may have yeah, to jump is, in. Yeah, we have to hear Carrie Bradshaw's thoughts on. Okay, well, Miranda's. <laughs> oh, Miranda, always good to hear from. Right, okay, uh-huh. so a private jet belonging to Prokos. Remember, he was the one who led that failed mutiny in June mm-hmm. uh, against Putin. So he, there was a, he was in a plane. Uh, it crashed on uh, on its way uh, to Moscow, mm-hmm. and supposedly it was shot down by Russian armed defenses. It hasn't been, they haven't announced that yet, but that's what everybody is saying at the moment. Because mm-hmm. this, is, this is breaking as we record this. Um, but yeah, all 10 people aboard were killed. He, the thing is, Prigozhin was on the manifest. Was on the manifest. So they, mm-hmm. they obviously, they haven't found his body yet. He's presumed dead. Mm-hmm. But then there's all these reports of a second plane that also belonged to him after that plane crash turning around and going back. Oh. oh. So we don't know if he's dead or not, but it is reported that he's dead. And maybe, and now conspiracy theorists are already coming out saying, well, this is, they want, he wants people to think he's dead. Right. Mm, right. I mean, right. Mm. There's a homeless man on that plane with his teeth in him. Mm. Yeah. He's a mercenary leader. Of course you want people to think you're dead. Now mm. you're a ghost. Yeah. He's ghost protocol. Samantha's back after 25, <laughs> after 25 year <laughs> absence. I was you know a Samantha kind of guy. Oh yeah. There's video of it. There's video. There's all video of this plane crashing. There's video of it. There's, yeah. I mean, cell phone video of just like people. And like just seeing a plane falling out of the sky. Do we have that video? We can we can look for it. Yeah, it's it's out there. I saw hmm. I saw some, but yeah, and just people, you know, would Putin really take out somebody <sighs> politically against? So him? out of character. Yeah, here's oh yeah here's the uh, the wreckage. Oh wow. But they don't have it falling out of the sky. Oh, there's video of it falling out. Of the oh, sky. there it is. Mm. Oh, that's a straight down kind of situation. Yeah, that is a sort of. Shot hit, down, hit by something because yeah. planes crash on takeoff and landing. Mm-hmm. You yeah, know, that could be an EMP, that like could be mid flight stuff, not so much. So, something, yeah, not immediately clear if he was on board, but yeah. uh, he was on the manifest. And well, either way, who I mean, knew it'd be 2023 and it'd be such a shit show? You know, it was like we all thought, everyone thought. I'm older than you guys, but everyone who's old like me sort of grew up thinking that all this stuff was like zits. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, you get it when you're 15, but then, you know, when you're 30, you're not going to have zits. We didn't know we'd have more zits at 30. Like, it'd be worse. Like, you you kind of grow, like, you, you thought, like, we in this country just kind of thought we're going to grow out of it. We had Perestroika with the Russians. We had Sting singing about how Russians love their children too and stuff. <laughs> That's right. And we got Gorbachev and everything, or what of his? What's his name? The alcoholic of Russia. I don't remember. The point is, it's like we're just going to kind of 
we're going to evolve. Right. We're just going to evolve. Like, there's not not going to have this anymore. There's not going to be these wars, and there's not going to be... shit show. not going to be human trafficking, not in 2023. That's the thing of the past. Like, we were going to, from a technological and a spiritual standpoint, we were going to leave all this behind. Mm-hmm. That's that was generally the thought the seventies and the eighties. We're just we're gonna literally outgrow this shit like 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 your teenage daughter who went through her slutty phase or her <laughs> her weird goth phase or something. Like, yeah, she's sixteen, she's yeah. all gothed out. But she's not gonna be thirty nine and wearing the fucking mascara to work. Like you just go, it's a face. Yeah. It's a face. And then she's going to get older and she's going to have kids and she's going to, or she's going to want to start a family and have a career. And it was understood that we would grow out of all this. We didn't know we were going to triple down on it in the time when we're all supposed to be driving around. We're supposed to be getting around on hoverboards Hover right boards, now yeah. and, w- and wearing one b- b- Mylar jumpsuit. Like, and everyone wore the same. And we greeted each other with a <laughs> fucked up handshake. You know, Nanu, Nanu. Like, there was not going to be, they're not going to be. The regular handshake wasn't going to exist. Yeah. Right. And they're still shooting uh, planes out of the sky. Mm-hmm. Here we they're are. still just doing all the shit. Assassinating uh, the d- political opponents and North Korea, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, he was all Putin's of guy. He, they called him his chef. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Yeah. It's a movie now. This is an action movie. Yeah. So uh, sad. Yeah. Anyway. So, well, I mean, obviously more more reports will come out once. Uh, but the, right now, all all the Russian government saying is, Oh yeah, everyone's dead on that plane. Everyone's just, dead, mm. or the whole That's family just got a free pass to move to Switzerland. You know, all Russia does is essentially what we do on a on a smaller scale, which is like Russia or whomever. They go. Well, we're just going to kidnap this uh, nine foot tall lesbian NBA player. And someone goes, What did she do? And it's like, I don't know. Who cares? Don't worry about it. <laughs> and then they go, All right. And you're like, Kidnap her. And then they go, Well, what do you want in return? We want the merchant of death. Yeah. And you go, Well, that guy's a munitions dealer. He's got, <laughs> his body counts like into the thousands, maybe the hundreds of thousands. And you go, We'll get him back. And then they go, all right, here's Brittany Griner, and we'll yeah. take the merchant of death back. And hey, then you know, flood TikTok and social media with all this Brittany Griner, rescue Brittany Griner right, stuff. Right, right. And let's... then I don't know if it's Iran. Was it Iran or Iraq? Or they, they took like six citizens. Oh, yeah. And we gave them like $6 billion or $9 billion like in return. And at a certain point, who's the idiot? Like, you just, <laughs> you just gobble up a few people who did nothing. And then we drop off nine billion dollars. I, I was like, I'm feeling that way at the sporting goods store. Like, what am I paying full full freight retail for? And that guy's got a shopping cart full of tennis sneakers. He's just walking out. Like, who's the idiot? And, and this with these these are the ground rules. Yeah. And then you sit around and go, Oh yeah, well that guy's that guy's in trouble. <laughs> he's in a lot of trouble. It's like he's not even running. He's just walking. Yeah. He's loading up a car. Well, he's in trouble? Yeah. Now give me your credit card. I don't know. Like, who's the... I who's the joke? Maybe we should just go full fucking rogue, too. You know what I mean? Because we're the guys who are like the manager of the Dick Sporting Goods going, that guy's in trouble. Like, well, no, he doesn't seem to be in trouble. He seems to be fine. I feel like the day I go to steal something from a store, the security the day just dick sands me into the ground. <laughs> That's just the day <laughs> make an example. And Joe Biden goes, That's not white supremacy we're talking uh, about. Yeah, maybe we're idiots. We're just paying full retail and not kidnapping journalists and stuff. Yeah. Like, maybe we should grab a couple of Russians and go, uh, what kind of, how big were their yachts? Bring them on by. We'll put the homeless, (laughs) six fucking homeless community in Manhattan and put on some oligarchs' yachts. That'd be great. And then we'll let them go. You know, this is turnabout. Yeah. It's it's fair play. uh, Like, uh, (laughs) we're the, the fucking one sober neighbor on, on the crack cul-de-sac. And we're just trying to play nice with all the neighbors, and they're just fucking our shit up. Yeah, they have no rules, and we have all of them. So, But we have a, also like a bad negotiator. So that's what's Joe Biden. He wants to give money to you know Iran anyways, so that's just a great excuse to do it. Yeah, how much money did he 
give for like six citizens or whatever. Because Obama then, did it the first time. Right. And this is the second time. So it's just, it's the Obama playbook, man. Cash, middle of the night. <laughs> middle of the night, yeah. yeah. Maybe Pallets. this is Obama. <laughs> and then you got to feel sorry. Six bill. Six billion to Iran. And any prisoners as well? Did they get anybody, any humans as well? Biden reaches six billion dollar deal to free Americans in exchange for jailed Iranians. So yes, we did get some people back. I'll find out who they are. It looks like it was five, not six, though. Five oh. billion or, or five people? Oh, five people. Oh, five, five people. people. Over a billion a person. Oh. Man, I'd like to be one of those people. I could get a nice break. I would no longer. Like, I'd come home, and it'd be good for the first couple of nights with the yellow ribbon around the old oak tree and stuff. And then at some person, at some point, the wife would go, isn't it your job to clean up the dog shit in the backyard? And I go, you talking to Mr. Billy? Yeah. Yeah. Billy over oh, here? Yeah, Do you know my value? Yeah. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> <laughs> Remember Steve Austin? Yeah. Six million dollar man? <laughs> Big fucking whoop. Exactly. You think the one billion dollar man's going to scoop up dog shit? Yeah. I got more important things to do, like watch Sports Center and read the back of sunflower oil. That's right. I got to read ingredients. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. Well, there you go. The Americans we got were unjustly detained on spying charges. That's my whole them. point. Why don't we just collect? Like, you know, let's just collect. Let's, grab a few. let's just grab any Mexican and go. They're spying on the United mm. States. Now we want this from Mexico, or we're not going to give them back. Finish our wall. Oh, the Mexico wouldn't. They would leave them, care. but yeah. but I just mean. Aren't we fools for playing by the rules at some point? Yes. On an international world stage. Oh, we're a joke to them now. Right. right. Yeah, we're and just then we're just like, oh, we're... Ukraine, here's the $200 billion where you can just, with well, the war effort and all. You brought up the, the border wall. Did you know that the surplus material, well, I wouldn't call it surplus, but the right. material that is being stored mm-hmm. um, at an incredible cost, to being stored and not being used to build is now being sold in a fire sale. Yeah, they're selling yeah. it at like five percent of the cost. Yep. Get rid of it. Getting getting rid of all of it, so that if they do lose, and we do need to build a border wall, wow, we got to buy it all over again. <laughs> well, walls don't work. <laughs> I love the fact. Look, if walls, if walls don't, don't work, we wouldn't why have did gates. They? We wouldn't uh, gates wouldn't have been exactly. invented if walls did. We'd go. Why do you need a gate? <laughs> we'll well, just walk right through this fence. Right now, through the Arizona border, they have the gates welded open for an antelope, so an antelope yeah. can get back and forth. But if walls don't work, why are we doing it? Well, here's my here would be my argument. The exact same people who would say walls don't work would want you arrested if you didn't have a regulation 42-inch fence around your swimming pool in Santa Monica. You would oh, be fucking... brilliant. You would be arrested and if now you did it's not a put... Double. You know it's a double gate now? Around the pool? Yeah, they want the first one and then the second one. Right, so I would say the Santa Monica City Council, hey, bitch, if they don't work, then why can't I get my certificate of completion on the home I built without a wall around the pool? Yep. So maybe they do work. You know what doesn't work, really? Mm-hmm. Masks. Oh, that's a good point. But, yeah. but a, a scuba mask in the pool. Ooh. Sorry. They show the um, they show one guy going over the fence and go, see, it didn't work. But that's not the point. Yeah, one or two guys can get over, but the amount of friction, you're not getting a million coming every month. So yeah, it's, they, they use that as their excuse. Oh, that guy just went over, told you, didn't work. Well, the other thing I always say is if Canada wanted to build a wall... I wouldn't be outraged by it. No. I'd just go, it's their country. I'd do whatever the fuck they want. And right. by the way, yeah, build a wall and then go through the checkpoints legally. Like, it's 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 all an insane argument. But yes, the fact that we tried and then we stopped and it's it's all it's all insane. Sorry. Where were we? All right. You want to do another one or are we going yeah. sex in the city? Okay. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, um, Britney Spears. I mean, you, you watch TMZ, so you've been oh. seeing what's going on with her. Uh, she... Uh, She's filing for divorce with her uh, husband Sam Asgari, who is Persian. Persian, He's and I'm, you know, did you? I didn't tell you. Oh, I'm I Persian. forgot you're Persian. Yeah, so I'm I'm half, but mm. my dad's Iranian, and so uh, Sam is kind of a disgrace to us. Oh. Is he? Yes. First of all, he married her, and Iranian mm. you're supposed to make it on your own. Get your own Mercedes, you know. You want ah, to get your work. A disgrace. That's right. If if she was a, a dog or a cat, would we suggest putting her down? 
at this point, it's would we say out of control? She's really she's she needs to she needs that conservatorship well, back. That's what that's what, even TMZ has taken a stance, right? I know they're, they're going like this was a bad idea to take away her conservatorship. Everyone was was pulling for the free Britney movement, right? And now yes. we're seeing her, and she is unhinged. What is look uh, historically? What's going to look look worse? Free bit free Britney or defund the police? Like well, <laughs> what's the if same they, people? If there's going to be yeah. a, it's the same people holding on the back of free Britney. It says <laughs> yeah. defund the police. Like how much wronger could you people get about a subject? Yeah, if Britney was an isolated incident, and the you know free whatever they're trying to free prisoners, and that's just the macro. So it's right. just both of them are horrible well, ideas. It's kind of at least the free Britney ends in our entertainment. Uh-huh. To a degree, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Defund the police does not. True. Yeah, she's definitely going through something. Yeah, she had a bunch of guys over saying she's hanging out with my fave guys. Like she's doing that thing, like when you when you have a breakup, you're you're. She, she had one of the guys like messages. licking her leg yeah. and stuff. Oh. By the way, they, they, TMZ always says she's hanging out with her manager, Kate Hudson. That's confusing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah he needs to change his name. Put but, a middle initial in there. Yeah, thank you. Kate B. Hudson. <laughs> yes. And um, and now she she just put out an, an Instagram video. She deleted it, but uh, it's her making an omelet. Oh. And she's just like, yeah, taking a break from all this divorce stuff. I'm going to make an omelet. And she she she's put... She, you, you guys play it on mute here, but she... Uh, it's about a, it's about ninety seconds long. She's cutting some bell peppers, she doesn't doesn't, flour oil, and she uh, does that I'm fast. I don't know how she does it. You know, like when it's sped up film, and yeah. it makes her look even more kind of like a psycho Charlie Chaplin. People are mm. already commenting she didn't deseed the bell peppers, oh. mm. so she's going seeded bell peppers. She doesn't pre-scramble the egg. She goes egg straight into the pan. Oh. I mean, oh, that's okay. a weird omelet. Not an omelet. Not no. an omelet. And then if you guys go to the very end of it, she, yeah, she puts it out. It's a scramble. That's it's a, a scramble. It's a freaking scramble. Putting tomatoes in there. All right. The thing I w- wanted to say that I forgot about that I was trying to work it work back into, but I'll I'll weave it into Britney Spears, which is how come there's nobody, nobody who can just go, hey, just I know you're nuts, but you're sending this thing out to the world and, you know, the conservatorship and TMZ and you just, you don't have to film yourself doing crazy shit. You can still do the crazy shit. Just, <laughs> just like upload it. I like watching you porn. Right? Fine. I don't film myself beating off. You know, there's <laughs> yeah. many things we do that are just done. I pick my nose when I drive, but I don't grab a TikTok video. I'm like, Brittany, do all the crazy shit. And and what I was saying, leading back or going backwards to Biden, which is when he, you know, whoever, Obama or whoever's pulling the strings and sort of telling him what all his policy is, can't that same person go, when you go out on stage in Maui, don't tell the kitchen fire story. Don't, don't tell it. They're not going to like it. It'll be in poor taste. And mm-hmm. Fox News is going to get hold of it. And they're going to make a bunch of light of it. And, 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 you know, when you show up at the anniversary of Benghazi, don't talk about your son That's dying because right everybody there. already knows that he died in Delaware, that yeah. he died in Tikrit. Like, just, just stay away from these these stories. You, just you, stay you, motivational. Look yeah, at the yeah. future. You've told them all before, and then they all got debunked. So they probably don't, told them that. that. Old habits die hard with this guy. Don't do that again. Just remember, these people are grieving. Don't tell. Just, just don't tell the story about your vet and your and kitchen just look fire. Awake, like, look awake while you're sitting. Yeah, there look too. awake. Like, don't check your watch when yeah. the bodies are being unloaded from the C one thirty. Like, just here's a couple, a couple of beats. Is is he not? He can't do it. Can't do it. He can't do it. And uh, can't do it. His wife can't tell him. Don't don't tell the kitchen fire story. We're we're we're, we're in a fire zone. Like they're a five hour flight. Can can she say? Just I know you love the kitchen fire story. Don't don't do it. <laughs> or is it a thing where uh, they they told him don't tell the story? Like don't don't think of a purple this elephant. Is, don't think of a purple elephant. Now we this have to. Is think my about no it. mayo means extra mayo world. <laughs> Dick, he you brought it up. <laughs> yep. Yeah. All right. But who, who dodged the biggest bullet in uh, in entertainment history is probably Justin Timberlake. What did he do? Well, 
Oh, with Brittany, Brittany and him were an item for a couple mm. years, and he mm. just took a left, and mm -hmm. he's probably yeah. looking at this going, "I'm a genius." <laughs> yeah, yeah, he saw it. He saw it. His early money on it. But anyway, um, yeah, TMZ reports that her entire support system, including her family, have been away in the past few months. All, all she has left really is her manager, Cade Hudson, and lawyer. Cade Hudson. Cade. Oh. C A D E. Mm -hmm. That's why it's confusing. Yeah, yeah. Well, they should tell her things. They should give her like a dummy phone that she thinks mm. she's uploading and it's not going Oh, anymore. right. Maybe Cardboard. she should actually get Kate Hudson. Maybe Kate Maybe would be a better, she's better advisor or yeah. lawyer. She's cool. Yeah. Well, you know, there's people that if they something tragic happens to them or they never create art again, I miss. Mm -hmm. But I'll be good. Here, artistically, yeah. as a consumer of her art, I never... She may have, and it's a picture on her Instagram. She may have ushered in the shit music second go round, like lap two of like shit music in my my which mind. song, <laughs> whatever her earliest. Ooh, baby, baby, not that yeah, one. The weird voicey. That's a hit song. <laughs> that well, but there, she has that vocal fry. Yes, like kinda, yes. There was a there was a two point oh of the whatever that Jimmy Jam. Uh, Minnesota, yeah, the it, yeah Minnesota sound the, that late eighties early. It's always New it's, Jack Swing kind of. It's yes, it's it's Paul Abdul and Janet Jackson. Yeah, that's the worst. It's just the worst. It's By just, the way, Britney Spears announced her divorce by, while dancing to a Janet Jackson song. Right. right. Yeah. So they they did that shit in the early. 90s and it's, it's just horrible music and but it's not just me that never gets played anymore because it's it's horrible and then she kind of started a 2.0 version of that i think in in 2000 or whenever she hit the yeah, scene yeah. Yeah. back yeah. to what Kayvon was saying earlier about uh you know ronnie and supposed to get your own what she is obviously obviously mentally disturbed a very damaged individual what kind of dude goes in there and so they're and calling him that. instead of Sam. every dude I went to high school with? Yeah. Are you oh. kidding me? That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, good he's for like, him. And he's trying to sue her now for more money after they already signed the prenup. But they call, instead of Sam Ascari, they're calling him Scam Ascari. Yeah. Ah. Well, it's like it's like Adam. If you ask a group full of adult males who wants to go on this camping trip with uh third grade boys the one who raises his hand is the one not to go yeah, that's right. how britney should have done this do you mm. want to marry me mm. yes, yes you can't no mm. so you wouldn't marry you wouldn't have married britney spears had you been in his position uh i know no i wouldn't that that actually seems like a uh that seems like hell torture um well, if what I, if that's, that's, but that's a said, handful man you just do it Stick around for 14 months and then get a nice payday. It's not going to be a California no fault divorce. She lives in Henderson, Nevada. Mm. They got different laws out six there, don't they? There's, there's got how that. long? They were together for six years. Yeah, but okay. but they're married for like 14 yeah, there, there years. There was a, there was a vicious prenup. There's no, no there's, way. He's look, some. there's a prenup, but the prenup. It's like Kevin Costner has a prenup. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. He doesn't go. If we get divorced, I get everything, and you get a Toyota Yaris, <laughs> and, and uh, I'll, I'll, I'll get you one bedroom in, in Valley Village. The prenup is I get to keep two hundred eighty-six million dollars, and you get fifteen million dollars, or or something. You don't mm -hmm. get a the shoes you walked in with, like. You get shit. You just yeah, you get right. a, a you get. I've a, done a lot worse for a lot less. So yeah, that's what I'm. I'm, thinking, I'm not. I don't know, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a family law lawyer, but although I'm beginning to become one, really. But if you really think about it, if somebody said, I want a prenup and I get 100% of my shit and you get 0% of anything, then your lawyer who's advising you on the prenup goes, well, not. because usually the person who wants the prenup, you know, Kevin Costner, Kevin Costner. You know, he can go from two hundred and eighty million dollars to two hundred and sixty million dollars. He doesn't want to go to half. Right. Sure. Right. So he'll go, I'll keep two sixty, you get twenty million bucks. So there you know, the prenup doesn't mean you get nothing. It just means you get to live like the one percenter, but you don't get to live like the one tenth percent. Yeah, it's still a mm -hmm. version of a compromise. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
And uh, does, does he also get half the royalties she made that full year they were together? Stuff like that. So it's probably that one year payout too. But I like that there's shame there's brought sh- to him through, Absolutely. through your culture. And he doesn't really look like the straightest man on the block anyway. He looks like he was kind of a beard to begin with. And there's a lot of mm. pictures of him floating around with his perfect abs holding his buddy. He's a model. And, yeah. Yeah. So it's a, uh, I wonder if that was a sham altogether. Oh, mm. sham. Sham uh, Yeah. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it was. I still believe in love. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sorry. All right, we'll see, we'll see what happens with Brittany. Yeah, I mean, you guys talked about Bud Light earlier. Well, Kid Rock was just recently photographed right. drinking Bud Light. Now, he mm-hmm. was, it seemed like he was the leader of the Bud Light boycott after he, he took sh- his machine gun. Yeah, he took his yeah, <laughs> rifle and just shot up with those cans of Bud Light. But now he's at a concert recently in Nashville and, um, yeah, holding the Bud Light. Where it's, is it looks he? looks like he's at his own club. No, it, this, is a, this is a, well, it's a concert. Uh, for a Colt Ford show, and then but yeah. at his club, so CNN reported like just a month, a month or so after the the shooting up of the Bud Light cans, his club was still selling Bud Light mm-hmm. in, in Nashville. Yeah, this does look like he's at his club, just because there's a kind of a terrace kind he's of terrace. looking down Balcony upon everybody. But rooftop, there may be more yeah. than one of those story. designs. Yeah, they're they are they're ubiquitous on broadway yeah. so anyway who cares but is this at his club because if it's at his club it's different than him being somewhere because you could be a coke guy all the way around but if you show up to a place that just have pepsi you might just take the pepsi if that's exactly. what they have so that's the part of the have story contracts with alcohol distributors right so if he went to a place it was, that was, at, it was at nashville sky deck okay if all nashville sky deck has in the light beer department is bud then he gets a pass but if he pulled it out of his fanny pack <laughs> then, <laughs> then no but also you can also kind of i mean we get into this stuff a lot but like you can be an advocate for public schools and send your kid to a private school. And I sure. won't scream and go, aha, aha. <laughs> it's just like, eh, you have enough money. That's what you do now. Um, so I don't really care, but it, it does make a difference whether they have it at his place or not. Well, I was at Walgreens and they were selling Bud Light 50% off. And, really? But you had to mail in a rebate coupon with your email address and phone number. So I was thinking, is Bud Light trying to find uh, the last of their remaining subscribers and then kind of yeah, mark really it direct start yeah. over again? So maybe someone just handed this to him, but uh, or maybe he doesn't care anymore. And But it's not going to change it. He would have to drink a lot of Bud Light to make up for... It not being in Costco anymore. It's not in some of the major retailers. And people are saying, like, look, he, I mean, he didn't specifically mention Dylan Mulvaney in this video or call for a boycott. So maybe, yeah, someone handed him Bud Light and he's just over it. Like, or rock and roll. And maybe he's trolling. (laughs) Could be. Or maybe he doesn't. Because it had to have crossed his mind, right? This is definitely something you think about. Well, I mean, isn't it how different is is this? How different is this than. Al Gore flying private. And it's all he talks about is the fucking environment, and then he flies private all mm-hmm. the time. Or John, John Edward, Kerry. John Kerry, or someone someone like that. Like, you can say, like, if you said to John Kerry, hey, fucking try, flying private, he'd go, yeah, I am. Yeah. But this I'm is- not creating global warming through this. I'm, I'm doing my job, and this is bad. Right. Or you need to this fix is this. Different. Like, is it, but is it in that he can still go, you know, fuck Bud Light, but, but one Bud Light's not going to affect their their sales. You know, no. they're still gonna they're still heading into the tank. I mean, Jimmy Kimmel would do it with Pepsi and Coke very easily, right? This is different. If someone hands him a Bud Light, he could just say, "No, do you have anything else?" and then just drink that. <laughs> oh no, Jimmy, you're combining two stories. Jimmy Kimmel spit Coke in my face. That's probably what you're thinking about because he thought that, but you're. What's in your head is two stories. Oh, okay. <laughs> you didn't know you had room in there for two? I, I barely have room for one, so. You do. Um, they, Jimmy Kimmel, not only spit Coke in my face when he thought he was drinking, oh, he spit Pepsi in my face after thinking he was drinking a Coke. and had He to reacted it. that way. He had to, re- he, it couldn't cross his palate. Wow. Didn't know what to do with it, yeah. so he spat at my <laughs> face. Um. But what you're taking is that story and combining it of when he did the Miller Lite commercial 
and we were golfing and they tried to hand him like all the golf remember the, the hot chick and the booze cart <laughs> yeah, yeah cart girls sure. and, and all all she had was bud light and in his contract they said for the next year or whatever it's it's miller light and all she had on the on the booze cart was bud light or coors light or like whatever it was and i was like yeah i'll take a Bud Light and Jimmy's like, yeah, I can't, you know. And I was like, we're on the 16th hole of some golf course, like with nowhere. Like, you think they have a drone? They got a guy with and, the telephoto. And he there. was just like, I, I got a contract. It says no, wow. and I'm not, Exclusive. I'm not doing it. And I'm like, all right, well, I have two. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but I was like, I like, I get it. We can't be photographed. We can't be in a crowded. But there's nobody here. Yep. And uh, that, I think that was in Maui, by the way. <laughs> and uh, he wouldn't do it. So those are the two. Those are the oh, sort okay. of the beer versus the coke. And but either way, I'm saying it's it's different than Al Gore saying I I I don't want to fly private or when he flies private because this is easy for you to just switch around. Like it's just and there, it, you're not suffering when you're or you're not losing a ton of comfort when you're while you're waiting for the other beer. Well, yeah, I get it, but you could drink a Bud Light and still be cheering for them to go under. Is kind of what I'm. I'm saying, and, and this you, place does serve Miller Lite. We've just found out. Uh-huh. So yeah. there you go. Well, he did his damage already. He, he openly really shot the cans, went viral, dropped from Costco, dropped from major stores, and even though he's selling it at his bar, he said that it wasn't selling. Well, to be yeah, uh, and he didn't do the damage. The damage was self-inflicted. True. Yeah. Nobody true, true. said I'm going to do this because Kid Rock shot. No, me. no, no. We, we don't make our uh, drinking preference over Kid Rock. Yeah, he was a catalyst, but yeah. yeah, he was a fun addition to it all. All right, let's bring the news home. All right, check out the Water Cooler podcast. All right, Appleton, Wisconsin, Skyline Comedy Club. That'll be me this Friday and Saturday. Four shows over there. Cave on. It's got shows all over the country, and you can go to k voncomedycom Yes. Jeff Mann's FantasyGuru.com is where you go for that. And until next time, Sam Kroll for k and Jeff Mann's Chris Maxipata saying mahalo. Mahalo.